all of it, he said. Just put it in. Is Captain called Cook? Or is Captain called Captain? I'm Cook! But Captain wants to tell me! I didn't even know you could talk until like five seconds ago. I, I, Calm down. No, sh I'm talking now. Okay. I'm just... Who made this? I never really know where I'm supposed to look at when I'm addressing <laughs> It's kind of like, do I look at your eyes? Because they don't move. Do I look at your mouth? What do I do here? Help me out. Hello and welcome to Tabletop Troop. Tabletop Troop! So without too much preamble, because you guys don't yet know us that well, we're gonna jump straight into it. Jump straight into the game. All Let's right. do it. Awesome. Let's do it, man. I'm waiting for this for a long time. Yeah, oh bro, you're telling me, bro. <laughs> Say that again. So, we are looking at a world that sits on the tip of a spiral arm of a galaxy not sunken within it, as might be found in other places. So truly the view is spectacular. You see the multi-tentacled spiral that is the galaxy in the night sky. We zoom in from there to the planet called Istara. Most prominently, it's three moons floating above, one gold, one whitish and one red. But right now we are not on the prime material plane of Istara. We are somewhere in the Feywild, mm -hmm. a hmm. reflection of the prime material plane. We rise high above billowing clouds of sunlit colors, as it is always this kind of dusky time of day in the Feywild. An impossibly high spire rising up and up and up as if into the heavens itself. And you see here a circular building, an old building with the stones kind of jutting out and some of them crumbling as if they're trying to crawl away from each other somehow. It's a bit ramshackle. And there are vines and creepers just covering this place. In fact, it kind of looks like the plants are the thing that's like holding the building together in a way. Inside though, it is immaculately kept. And the dome, solid big dome of this building is only broken by a massive jutting telescope that looks through a crack. This is called the Auric Observatory. It is a place that is watched over by a organization called the Wartstheorie, also commonly just called the Watchers. Easy to spell. <laughs> <laughs> Way easy right. to spell. Um, <laughs> inside you see it is not so ramshackle, it is immaculately kept. If somewhat messy, there are maps and ledgers and books strewn all about. Inside the circular building there are uh, floor-to-ceiling uh, bookshelves with ladders to reach. Um, there are tables and stands with various research materials on them. There is a globe of Istara that stands off a big globe that can spin, kind of interactive, stands off to the one side. Most notably, there is a spiral staircase leading to a big platform where there is this telescope, or rather the auroscope, as it is known. It has a multitude of levers and knobs and all kinds of buttons that who knows does what. It just looks unnecessarily complicated. <laughs> I'm just taking yeah. horoscope, not horoscope. Horoscope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> More reliable. Like the aura of someone, you know. Ooh, okay. Um, because it is said to be able to see the fields of magic itself, um, ley lines and, you know, just blankets of magic and the shifting and the changing of, of energy itself within creatures and places, um, even worlds. But this one is specifically trained to look at Istara, the prime material plane, as well as the Feywild, because what affects one affects the other. Mm. And the Vart story, the Watchers, are stationed here to look for danger um, in the more ethereal realms of the world. So you see this massive telescope, which does all this, 
Um, it's rumored that the main lens of the telescope, even though there are interchanging and interlockable things, the main lens is rumored to be that of uh, an eye of an ancient beholder itself that is mm. propped onto the top Wouldn't of want the to break that. <laughs> <laughs> right now, though, Hafka, or Newt, as you prefer, you sense a different kind of danger. You sense a incoming inquisition. Oh no. As opposite you standing in this room, two figures. One is a man called Kristal. Uh, he is what you would call an astral elf. He has this kind of ashen gray skin, and he wears the customary purple robe of high-ranking members of the Watchers, which is kind of dotted with these kind of star cosmic specks on it, and it has these upturned kind of spiral shoulder pieces with these kind of Ooh. spikes and yeah. ornate uh, rim all around the cloak. Um, and he has this waft of white hair that hangs off to the one side of his face, and he's looking very smug and almost gleeful at the predicament you find him in, because next to him is the sort of grandmaster of the Watchers themselves, uh, called the Grand Eye. This is a being that you actually don't know what manner of being they are, because their face looks like it is a mask. It's this kind of crystalline, almost shell-like texture with these wispy tendrils sticking off of it. Um, and he is cloaked in, a, in a, also a big purple cloak, um, but this of the grand eye. So his one is much more ornate. And he has a weird face. Like... <laughs> it just has weird face. It, he has weird face. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> but um, you can't quite make out if it's a mask or if it's his actual face. It looks like shell-like texture and has these kind of spirally beady <clears throat> eyes. And you just... The only thing that ever seems to move is his mouth. And underneath this big draped cloak, you see six spindly arms that kind of stick out mm. and um, have these very pointy fingers. And it's kind of this white uh, alabaster colored skin, but it, it's kind of slimy also, like a slug perhaps. Mm. Is, it, is it six cobalts in a, in a, <laughs> in a trench coat? <laughs> could be, could be. No, it's, it's, he's, he's too big for that and the arms are, are way too long. Um, and he doesn't really, you haven't seen him much, he doesn't speak much, but you get the sense of irateness now by the way that these six arms and, and the fingers on them are sort of nervously, or not nervously, but perhaps more annoyingly twitching. Mm. Can you describe what you look like, Newt, and how you react to the situation? Well, um, I swear it wasn't my fault. Uh, what you see is you see a uh, about a three foot tall um, creature that is uh, Vaguely humanoid in shape, but his skin is kind of a dull gray green kind of bark like texture And instead of hair he has kind of these kind of jagged roots that jut up behind his head and kind of makes him look like he's uh, uh, Pointy and uh, then he's got these kind of two gnarled uh, wings that cr cr crop out behind him and they've got like leaves for feathers mm -hmm. so uh, but then he's wearing the the classic kind of uh, lowly blue order uh, uniform so he's kind of uh, he's got a, a pauldron on one side and it's mostly a leather jerkin and then a blue kind of blazer underneath with a couple of little ornamentations but he's pretty low rank and um, he, he's just kind of sitting with his arms crossed. He's really nervous because obviously these guys are his bosses um, and uh, he done gone messed up. Mm. Uh, so he's, he's, he's getting ready to get grilled. Mm. It's interesting because in this particular case, um, you're actually telling the truth, <laughs> but um, you're not known for that. So this uh, astral elf who is kind of like your Draco Malfoy, in a way. Oh, wow. Um, he now looks at you. Halfgun. Of course it is Halfgun. Newt, please. Oh, Newt, as you prefer these days very well. Well, I do not think... I have to tell you that it is a very serious matter that 
the Grand Eye himself is here to hear what you have to say, so please, Newt, do not waste our time and, and tell us what it is that you think you saw through the horoscope. Well, so this time I was doing what I was assigned to do, mm -hmm. believe it or not, and I was looking through the scope at the, the frigid south, the boring wasteland at the bottom of the prime material plane where nothing ever happens, and I was watching snowfall. And like, we're supposed to watch for stuff, but nothing's happened. I'm, I'm a watcher and I'm watching nothing. And so naturally speaking, I got bored. <laughs> So I thought, well, there's got to be something more useful to watch, more interesting. So I just, you know, I, I fiddled with some settings and I, I reoriented the scope to look at the center of the planet. And, uh, you know, I, I may or may have done this once or twice. So uh, I, I, I kind of genuinely know what it looks like. You know, it's this kind of dark sphere and it's kind of sucks light into it and it's... It's pretty cool looking. It's something much more worth watching than the snow, let's be honest. And uh, this particular instance, and the reason that I'm bringing it to your attention in the first place, is because uh, normally there's this kind of sphere and it just sucks in all light, but this time there were these like flashes and like lightning striking across the top of veins or something. It was really weird. Um, and I thought, I've never seen that before. That's, that's atypical. So, it, you know, when, since we're watchers and we're watching for extra planar abnormalities, I thought it might be good to report this up the chain, even, up the chain, even though it, strictly speaking, wasn't what I was supposed to be looking at on this particular day. Are you sure the lens wasn't dirty? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always a possibility, but... Yeah. You see they share share a look between them, kind of. It's a loaded look, like there's a bit of concern there. And the grand eye, it's impossible to read his face, but the fingers... I never really know where I'm supposed to look at when I'm addressing <laughs> him. It's kind of like, do I look at your eyes? Because they don't move. Do I look at your mouth? What do I do here? Help me out. The fingers still kind of twitching underneath the robes, um, face impassive, and you just see now the mouth split open just the row of kind of uh, slightly jagged teeth. It was definitely better before. <laughs> <laughs> you speak truth, boy. Of course. What else would there be to speak? Grandmaster, if I may, this man, if he is a man, even a boy perhaps you could call him, he is known for his pranks and uh, you know, how do they say, um, <laughs> calling dire wolf, uh, you know, he does it all the time. We cannot trust what he says. He was not even authorized to look at this sphere. What are you even doing here? Why, why are you here? I am very close to the Grand Eye. I help him with a lot of his matters. If you would do your job properly, you would have also moved up in the ranks by now, Hafgan. Yeah, well, maybe I'm not such a kiss-ass. Either way, I do not think the Grand Eye believes you just yet, and why should he? Because we have also looked through the horoscope since then, and we have both seen nothing. Now, now, why would I invite punishment upon myself? Everybody knows that messing with the scope when you're not supposed to is a punishable offense. So would I be dumb enough to mess with the scope and then come and tell somebody that I did it unless I thought it was important? No. And so the, I'm in, yes, I know that there's going to be some form of punishment for messing with the scope when I wasn't supposed to, but I figured that what I saw was of enough relevance that I should report it anyway. I wouldn't do that as a prank because I don't want to get done scrubbing boots like normal. The Grand Eye moves forward and one of his long arms, spindly arms, just grabs you by the face and yeah. pulls you in. Uh, and, and these like weird, beady, hypnotic mm. eyes just oh, but... stare at yours. <laughs> I didn't think so either. That's why I told you. They look at each other again. Grandai, if I may, a suggestion. 
and Grand Aegis. <clears throat> and he moves over to him and cups a hand and and starts to whisper. Now, if you want to try to perceive what exactly it is they're saying. Oh, can, definitely. You can roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there, there's two options. You can roll a perception check, <clears throat> or if you just want to gauge their general body language and the vibe they're giving off, you can roll a insight. The insight's gonna be slightly easier than the perception. So and it's up to no you. No pressure, it's the first roll of the campaign. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a little Please. nervous. Um, I'm gonna roll insight. They're the same bonus, so it doesn't really matter. Fifteen? Uh, Fifteen. Right, so with insight, which is the easier one than actually trying to hear what they say. So you don't hear what they say, but you get a definite vibe of scheming, not telling you the full truth or obscuring something from you. Oh, that's not good. You, you get the sense that they believe you this time around, but um, that's something. there's something else here going on hidden that's yeah, it doesn't feel right. You feel scared in this moment of time. And after they, they, they converse and they turn back to you. And so Crystal, who weirdly is sort of the mouthpiece for the Grand Eye, who doesn't say much, just watches his weird face. Um, Crystal turns back to you and says, So, uh, the Grand Eye has decided that should this be true, that what you saw is real? For whatever reason, we higher ranking members and much more experienced than you, no offense, um, cannot see it. Then... Maybe you're not looking. Excuse me? <laughs> you heard me. Maybe you're not looking. I feel like HR should get involved in this conversation. <laughs> well. Regardless, since you have such strong convictions of what you saw, we're going to send you to Istara to uh, investigate to a certain fashion. Um, let's see. And You're going to send me to the center of the planet? No, 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 not the center. Uh, he struts over to the globe that's off to the side of the room, the big globe, and he kind of gives it a spin and holds his finger out. Um, what about... Right here. Oh, oh, no, no, fuck no. <laughs> well, no, that no. is that is where you were supposed to be looking, Hafka. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it this way. You're at the bottom. No better place to start. If you don't find anything there, you can move up. But for now, you will be stationed here in Numaki for quite a while. Do I look like I was cut out for the winter? No, I am a creature of spring. Please. It is not much of our concern, Newt. Newt? It's cold blooded. You can't send me someplace to the cold winter. No, the, it isn't going to work, I swear. I, I told you what is legitimately probably really relevant information, and you're punishing me by sending me to the ass end of nowhere? <laughs> well, if you are so sure and so certain that this is what you saw, then someone has to go look. Yeah, but I explicitly said I didn't see jack shit <laughs> in the frigid south. Well, That's why I looked somewhere else. So why, why would you send me to where you know there is nothing? Because you have to start somewhere, Newt, and we can't just send you to the center of the planet. Anywhere would be better than there. It is an order, boy. You go. Y'all in cahoots. This is. I, I see what's happening here. This. I. I protest. There is nothing to protest, boy. You go or you die. Well, when you put it like that. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> go death. Y'all are jerks. Like I joined this order. I didn't really have a choice, but <laughs> I think you know you, it was better than sitting around doing nothing. But that literally is what you do. You sit around doing nothing. You you say that you're observing and watching over things that are supposed to happen and are standing in the gap against extra planar terrors. But when I actually tell you something of relevance, I'm I'm busted down to some idiotic outpost. What was? Well, think about it this way, Newt. If you don't find anything there. 
you report back and perhaps we send you to the next place. I can save a whole lot of bureaucracy. I didn't find anything there. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to Numaki, Newt, and that is all. And they start to walk away. Well, shit. You did this to yourself, Newt. <laughs> You could have just not said anything. So after some time pondering this over, um, immediately some other people filter in to watch you to make sure you don't just, you know, run really? away. Really? <laughs> Where am I going to go? We're in a fucking... <laughs> they, they just stand there cross arms watching uh, while you gather your things. There's a last moment where you go sit back at the telescope, or at the horoscope rather, and look at... Numaki again, the frigid south. Just as a kind of like, man, am I really going to this place? Kind of look at other places that could have been way more interesting. So as I'm as I'm sitting here at this mm -hmm. telescope, and you know, fuck all these guys, uh, I uh, kind of reach up and I, you know, like, I figure, you know, I'm kind of a plant-like creature. I probably got some instead of earwax, I got some sap or something behind my ears. So I just kind of like. Scrape a little bit off and then, then stick it right on the eyepiece, <laughs> just like right around the rim, <laughs> so that the next person who uh, who who goes and puts their eye up to it uh, has a little bit of a nasty surprise. Okay, sure. Going out with grace, I see. <laughs> <laughs> they think they're going to have the last word. We zoom through this telescope now, looking at Numaki, and we see immediately the brilliant uh, neon aurora borealis lights that hovers over all of the south and um, we zoom further in Ooh. and it is a <laughs> oh it's gonna be cold here <laughs> um it is a cold icy landscape there are these dark black spires and peaks that um, swerve up into the sky as if waves of this dark um, substance were swept up by the wind and frozen in place these are um the rocks and, and the mountains here that have this pitch black, almost obsidian texture to them and color to them. And between these jagged ranges are fields of white, just layers of snow and frost covering immovable ice, biting winds that send the snow into these whirling, ghostly swirls. This is Numaki, eh? This is Numaki, the ass end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> AKA the frigid south. Um, and by the way, this is a couple of weeks later from that incident okay. of you being exiled exiled yeah um so you've you've been around here for a while now but currently we zoom from here up to one of the few well-established villages in this region um which is called iot and this is home to the ice blood clan and this is their village at the foot of one of these, one of the much bigger black mountains that stick up here. You see um, a sprawling village or a town even perhaps because of its size of structures made out of bones that are the size of whale ribs um, that form most of the structures and are laden with heavy pelts and furs and, and painted with, with various ornate uh, pictures, mostly of kind of animals and kind of spiritual scenes and that kind of thing. The mountain itself, one of the most imposing black rocks in this area, has carved in it the faces of various uh, orc women. Uh, these are the previous forge mothers of the clan. The biggest one that has a open gaping maw being the original first forge mother leader of the clan and from within you hear a furious clanging of hammer to metal and you see the flickering of forge fire within now we zoom in and in one of the chambers that's meticulously carved into beautiful shapes to form a smithing chamber which is currently housing the current Forge Mother, but also your mother, Dust. Ooh. 
and she is working on an anvil. There's a fire, there's the quenching bed of water, and she has some small objects and a tongue and a hammer in the other hand, and she's working it furiously. <laughs> it's a very small thing, and she's like going way too overboard <laughs> on this. For it, like mom. for it to be <laughs> worth it. Um, and you can see she's, she's furious. She is this hulking orc, orcish woman with these long, beautiful braids and multiple ornately worked pieces of, of metal that is compounded with a substance here called Numak, which is where the entire Frigid South gets its name, Numaki, which are these black stones mined from deeper down where they kind of have these purplish, pinkish veins and specks of color running through them, and they give some interesting properties to weapons and things when worked into it. And you can see she has trinkets of that all over. But yeah, she's a mean-looking woman, and she looks at you now. Would you care to describe yourself and how you react cool. to what also seems to be an inquisition coming up? <laughs> I'm 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 trying to return her gaze, but it's it's a little bit difficult. And, and standing before her is also an orc-ish looking female, uh, not quite a full orc. This is definitely a half orc of some some delineation. Uh, she has like a messy mop of black hair, and like it's kind of a, like a rough shag of of blackish, purplish hair. Uh, she's got these piercing yellow eyes, blue skin. Uh, also just wearing like a collection of like leather and fur and some animal trinkets. Definitely a per person of the wilds and the wilderness and wearing that kind of, those sorts of affectations. Um, she's got like a muscular-ish kind of bull. She's not like swole, but she's definitely got some cut. muscle to her. Cut! She's cut! <laughs> uh, yoga on the weekends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she... <laughs> She's also covered in, like, she's got a collection of scars and stuff, very haphazardly, a couple of on her face. She's got a pretty big one across the bridge of her nose. Um, not too many bits of jewelry, everything's fairly simple, but lots of, like, animal bones and fur and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, very, uh, she's not super tall, she's about six feet or so, um, so, so pretty big, but definitely dwarfed by her mom in a big way. Her mom is huge, um, so she's kind of just standing in front of her kind of just trying to keep her gaze, but she's failing at, at times. Yeah. She's, she's trying to put on a, a tough air. Yeah, definitely losing in the game of uh, stare-off. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, you guys, which is interesting about these orcs, they all have this kind of blue, shades of blue in their skin. Mm -hmm. um, hers, which is like this very uh, prominent, icy, deep blue. Uh, yours may be a little bit less because you're half-half. A little bit pale, a little bit yeah. diluted, <laughs> yeah. She stops working the metal for a bit. Was it your adult-minded father that put this harebrained idea into your head? Father has nothing to do with this, okay? This is my decision. And I'm going to go, and there is nothing you can do to stop me. I have to go. Why a Kube of all places? Do you know how hot it is there? Yes, okay, I know it's like a little bit warmer, but... A little bit warmer? <laughs> I will take... Thin clothes, okay? It will be fine. Maybe a short pant. I have to go, you know this. It is crazy. It is crazy, that's why you do this to me. It is the only place where I can maybe find answers. I'm not going to find them here, I can't stay. You have to let me go. Well, not let, I'm, go I'm going. I'm not, this is not, I'm not asking permission. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> That's, that's hurtful, but don't blame yourself. Dust, it is very, very close to your your rites of passage coming up. Who is going to be the next Forge Mother? I never wanted to be Forge Mother. Well, you know that your sister cannot. I'm leaving, and that is the end of it. I will be back, but I have to go. Make a persuasion check. Shit. As you, as you, I'm real bad at that. You, you see her like clenching her fists, and it sends her <clears throat> muscles rippling all the way up Jeez. through her arms and her shoulders. She's so you know she can clock you <laughs> yeah. in one, one go. At, at the mention of my sister, as well, mm. 
I think, it, like, she knows that that's something that's going to hurt me specifically. That's like a, a pain point for me. Yeah. Um, so I, I flinched a little bit at that mention. Ooh. A persuasion? Yeah. <laughs> that's a six and that's a minus two. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! You do not ask permission. I give permission whether you ask or not. I am Forge Mother. What but are you I'm... going to do? Keep, lock me up, put me away, hide me away like you did to father? No, I'm going. I will kill you if I must. Then I will fight back and maybe lose, but I'll die trying. <laughs> you want to break 10 generations lineage of Forge Mother, huh? Is that what you want to do? I don't want to do this, mother. But what other choice do I have? We are plagued. We are under siege every day. Something has to be done. You know this. No one else is going to go. I am the only one who can. And at that you see a change in her demeanor. Um, something you rarely ever see, a moment of softness, a moment of, of vulnerability. Okay, Dust. But promise me you will try to be back for your rite of passage in a few months' time. I will try. I will, I promise. I must apologize, I am very stressed. The Audubon people have been on my case. Audubon? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The boss, the Germans? <laughs> <laughs> the Audubon, which you know is, is, a, is, a, is a race of walrus folk yes. that also inhabit the area. Audubon. Audubon, like uh, O-D-O-B-E-N. Odoven, ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so she, she continues to say, they've been on my case to stop the export of Numak. I don't know why. It is our main export. It is what keeps us thriving. So I am... I'm getting one last shipment out before maybe shit hits the fan with them. I cannot believe I am telling you this, but... Early tomorrow morning, there is ship coming to pick up Numak. It is coincidentally heading to Wakubi. Perhaps it is a sign. Thank you, Mother. You I mark am. a good point. Oh. No. <laughs> Got him. No. <laughs> Disadvantage. Oh, no. Psychic damage. Um, th thank you, Mother. I, I appreciate that. And I know you have a lot of responsibilities, and if you could go, you would. I know this affects our family more than it does anyone else. And I appreciate what you're going through. I do not have much money to give you. That is fine. I am a charmer. I will... <sighs> Why you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> I am charming. Everybody knows this. Yes, you get that from your father. Yeah. People love me. Sure. It, okay. <laughs> Well, you could have with, just sent me without a painful word, but not. With right. that minus two persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves. Look, perhaps you can persuade them as part of the generous supply we are giving them to take you. It is not really a passenger ship, it is cargo ship. So, I don't know. See what you can do. Thank you, Mother. And, and be careful, Dust. Of course, I'm always careful. I really do still hope that one day you will decide to take on the mantle of Forge Mother. I want to make you proud, Mother, but I also need to be true to myself. And maybe this journey will help me figure that out. Very well. I cannot stop change. No. No, you cannot. One last thing, Dust. And you see the metal pieces that she had been working on the anvil now which you hadn't been paying much attention to previously because you just were scared shitless. <laughs> um, she, she now gathers them up and gives it to you, and it is beautifully crafted arrowheads infused with Numak. Ooh. Ooh. Dang. Ooh. Yeah, which they have this black obsidian look to them with this kind of purple flecks in between. Farewell, my daughter. And she goes in for a big bear hug and like <laughs> crushes you. <laughs> Tap out. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. I will 
cherish these arrows until I have to use them and then they are going to be gone. But until then, thank you. And I will see you when I can. And tell those stupid people on the ship they can pay better next time. Of course. I will. I am very good at making deals. People love me. <laughs> sure. And with that, we cut to inside this ship, which is still making its way. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. On the ship, there are lots of uh, barrels and crates already packed. And in one such big crate, it is pitch dark inside, of course. And inside said crate is sitting a hulking uh, automaton of sorts, squished up inside. Uh, how he got here was through posting himself as cargo onto the ship. Um, Siegfried, do you care to describe what you look like scrunched up inside this crate? Okay, scrunched up inside the box, um, it would be hard to notice, but if he had to stand up straight, you would see a... If he stand up, stood up straight, you would see an eight foot tall, about five feet wide at the shoulders, massive, like, war golem, um, made from mostly brass. And he's got like some blue trimmings, there's some dents. Uh, we'll see on one of the pauldrons, massive pauldrons, it says S13G. Um, what's funny about him is he, he's massively top heavy. So massive shoulders, um, small um, upper arms, but his forearms are also about the size of a barrel. And then as he, as he gets to his feet, it just becomes smaller and tiny and tiny, tinier. So almost like a very, it's like a gorilla that skipped leg day. Basically. Yeah, man. <laughs> I was like, never skipped leg day. Um, he hunches most of the time. Obviously now he's hunching in the box. Massive, massive robotic brass and blue. And then he has like a little, um, to cover his decency, not that this uh, war golem has any parts or bits, um, <laughs> but he has like this little brown belt with some potions and tools and things on it, and then just like a little um, raggedy, like, uh, there's just like some, some red rags that hang over it, basically. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is Siegfried. Not that anyone would, I think, could see him currently. No. Nobody sees him currently. He's sitting inside this uh, creaking ship. You hear the waves lapping against the hull. Um, and inside this box, you are replaying a memory. Or perhaps to you, it's more uh, of a, a piece of data that you can almost recall flawlessly. Um, and even though you've played it to yourself a thousand times, you play it one more time, to see if you missed anything. A very human thing to do. Even though you know you haven't missed anything, you've watched it a thousand times, but yet you replay it one more time. And the memory takes you back to the streets of Egalia, a bustling city of magnificent spiring towers, a lightning rail, locomotive track that runs across the sky, the invention of skyships just happening right now where people are working on that and you're seeing the first skyships appear in the world. It is, it is a city of, of invention and ingenuity and just new things to happen and there's, a, there's an air and an energy of just innovation and the future and the buildings themselves have these almost like biophilic crazy designs um, and the whole city just feels like potential manifested. And it is also within this kind of icy region of the world, but it is protected by a kind of temperature dome that emanates from the center of the city, which gives most parts of the city a kind of nice temperate uh, temperature to, to live by. But it gets colder and colder as it goes towards the edges of this island. Um, that forms a part of the nation of Einheim but this is sort of an independent uh, city-state. And you are now walking in this memory. You're walking with a friend and your creator, Hilda. And you guys are coming to see some of the first skyships being built in their docks. Is it not amazing, Hilda? All the skyships here, it's beautiful what they can do. 
with ingenuity? I, I cannot believe we have finally reached something like this. This is going to change everything, Siegfried. Do, do you think that we can take this, these skyships to, to Akube, perhaps? Or? I do not know about that, Siggy. Uh, perhaps we should take a, a normal ship for now. Um, they are still working out some kinks. And I think only the, the really rich right now can afford uh, to have ones for themselves or passage. I think they're not ready for the public yet. Uh, but can't we just ask for some money from someone? <laughs> it, it, it doesn't work like that, Siegfried. You have to make money. Make it like we make, they make the ships? I mean, we both can, we're both artificers, we can, we can make money. Uh, no, 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 Siegfried, that is illegal. Uh, I've explained this. Um, money is a, a form of, hmm, how can we say, exchange of energy that represents one person giving something to another. Do you understand? Is it like a gift? Like a gift, yes, but it is a gift that everybody knows the worth of. Okay, but then why don't they give the money to us so that we can afford <laughs> the skyship? I don't know. <laughs> this does not compute. <laughs> uh, We've been saying. Short circus. We will get back to that, Siegfried. Just wait here for a while. I'm actually going to find out perhaps there will be skyships ready soon and perhaps we could take a skyship. Wouldn't that be exciting? That would be very exciting. Okay, just wait for me here, right, Siki? Okay, I will wait right here, right at this spot, and he stops immediately, and like, I don't know if it's an awkward position, if he's blocking anyone, but he stops <laughs> right there. It is like in, in, in a kind of busy throng uh, th through fair of where people are walking, so people kind of have to step around you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's open streets. Like, sorry, sorry, I have to wait here, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. She disappears out of sight for a while. She goes off to the docks where these things are being built. Um, which, which, by the way, you're not like, right now you're not at sea level. You're kind of at these raised platform docks where okay. they've kind of opened it up to the public to see these skyships being built and so on. So it's kind of a raised platform jutting out over a hillside that, that you can see the, the shore and horizon. Uh, Siegfried will take, he um, goes in one of these pouches and he takes out this like little journal that uh, it had Hilda written on front and then kind of scratched out and now Siegfried, it looks like Hilda might have given it to Siegfried and he's like, looks around and he's like making notes and he's not much of a, a drawer, but he tries to make like a little sketch as, as He's very good at drawing like plans and like engineering sketches, mm -hmm. but so he's like doing that and trying to figure out how they design the ships and everything. Okay. Very excited. Cool. You can make a, um, you can make an inside check if you want to like try and try and figure something out, or a performance if you just want to do a good sketch. I am proficient in calligrapher's supplies. Oh, okay. Inside plus my proficiency. Mm. I'm not proficient inside, but can I add it because I'm? You can add your calligraphers, yeah. Okay. Nine. <laughs> no. Nine. 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 You start. This is not good. No. You start the sketch and it's going well, but then a boy out of nowhere bah, slams into your side um, as they didn't look where they were running, and they hit their head, ah, and they fall back onto the floor, onto their butt, and you see uh, beside them drops this little um, mechanical toy that they had, and it. You know that like slow motion break, <laughs> and you watch this now, and you immediately forget about your sketch. Oh, I'm so sorry. And he he's massive, so he looks down on this boy. <laughs> this massive robot thing just um, turns into the small, to tiny boy. Like, are you okay? Can I help you up? This massive hand. The hand is probably bigger. The, old, the hand is bigger than the boy. But it's like four digits. He starts to like crawl back. Hey, you're a war golem. Uh, is, yes, but uh, that uh, is what I am. You, you're dangerous. Well, no, I'm not dangerous. It's uh, uh, unless uh, unless you're an evil bad guy. I mean, are you an evil bad guy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you don't look dangerous. Uh, I'm very good at assessing threats. So make a percent. Well, if you want to first go ahead and assess the threat. <laughs> assess the threat. <laughs> um, so, intimidation so, check. So oh, as, he, as, as, as the kid says, um, I don't know. Then he, uh, suddenly he stands up. Normally he slouches a little bit, and he stands up straight. He's full eight feet high. His eyes go red. <laughs> assessing threat. <laughs> <laughs> um, ten. Oh, so he's like, 
Uh, so what kind of what what race is it? Is it like uh, a human boy? It's just a human boy, yeah. We're kind of dirty, right? Ra Subject, clothes. unknown, race, human, humanoid, assessing danger. <laughs> Weapons? Does he have anything on him that looks like a weapon? Um, he, you can see he comes from the snow slums, which is like the dodgy part of town. Okay. And so he has like a little rock that's been sharpened into like a makes, makeshift shiv type thing okay. that he carries on in, a, in a pocket, but it's more for like self-defense. Okay. Weapon identified, assessing threat, threat, minimal. And then he starches back and his eyes go this like, and a blue color is like, oh no, you, you look fine. I think the, it's, it's all right, let me help you up. And then like tr tries to pick him up. He's like, oh, I'm shaking. Uh, uh, um, make a make persuasion check as you as you just uh, like try to approach him as subtly as you can. Also, my strong suit. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay. He's more frozen and like petrified and doesn't want to run away, but he he lets you reach oh, out. I understand. Him. This is why this is happening. This is because I've introduced myself to you. My name is Siegfried. How can I help you, friend? Um, he looks over now and sees his broken clockwork toy. My toy! Oh, I am very sorry. Um, I, I, I make things and fix things. Can I try and help fix your toy? And I don't even like wait for him to answer. I just like start picking it up and like I look at it. Trust me, I've, I've got this. I've got this. <laughs> He just looks terrified, even more terrified now but that you're like tinkering with the toy. Do you, do you want to go ahead and like do a tinker check? Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got mending, I've got um, yeah. tinkerer's tools, all of that. Um, I'd say like you don't even have to roll, it's just, you just go to town on that thing and just... <laughs> so, so because his hands are so massive, like handling fine things is like kind of interesting. Yeah. He, he's his palm opens up and tiny little smaller hands like oh. Oh. come out. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Not creepy at all. Um, oh, almost man. like a ghost in the shell when those, they like do yep. the typing thing. Uh. Like, and it, it's all these little tiny hands and like arms and claws and things come out and little screwdrivers <laughs> and things. And yeah, and I fix a little toy and I'm like, here you go. And I try and bend as low as I can to meet his eye level. Like my legs actually, and my arms, they kind of like pistons, so they can shorten up. So like shortens, mm. shortens. So it almost looks like a very <laughs> overweight penguin. <laughs> like, Here you go, but he's still like yeah. six foot seven. Yeah. Wow, Mister, that's amazing! And he starts to wind it up, and it's it's like this little um, little um, just this creature. You're not really quite sure what it is. Um, I don't know if you, if you want to make a nature check, you can. Yeah. But it's um, let's see what you get. Uh, 12? Uh -huh. It's kind of like a alpaca looking thing, but with like mm. longer legs and because it's mechanical, you know those like robot dogs they have now, it kind of yeah. moves like that. I see um, what this is, this is a doggy. <laughs> uh, something like that, mister. The doggy, there's something wrong with the doggy's neck, I think. It's a bit long. No, no, it's, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a long-legged alpaca. It's, um... Alpaca. Yeah, and he sees it like walking, like running away, <laughs> and he, cha he chases after it without like finishing the sentence. And I just go, I just like don't like recognize it or realize that he's walked away. I just go, out back, uh, and I kind of like start drawing a thing in my in my journal, making a note. As you do, you still have a general kind of uh, perception of him running off in an angle, and at that moment when you start to draw again, you see. <laughs> an explosion in the background and this thick green smog fills the air for like a big space around and there's commotion all of a sudden people scattering in different directions okay. you see as it starts to clear you're standing there waiting you probably go into your threat assessment yeah so i like immediately turn to it my eyes go red actually my eyes go like this green color like almost like more worried mm -hmm. and i just go Hil hilda Hil hilda okay are you alright, Hilda? Where are you? You try and scan for her, and as the smog clears, you see a skyship, a functioning one, um, rise up into the air. And you see, climb, like, pulling itself up on a rope is this kind of big mechanical spider construct that has her, like, in a, in a cage. Like, its legs are clamped to form a cage around her. And you see a rope, like, pulling it up towards the skyship. And there's a man with a cloak on 
um, and he has kind of gray, all you see is gray skin, red eyes, and he's hanging onto the side of the cage and they're being pulled up towards the skyship. I immediately try and run to try and help her. You run, but unless you can somehow miraculously get 100 feet up in the air, not at the third level. <laughs> 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 One um, day. I run and I just, Hilda, Hilda, no, no, like uh, full on panic mode. As the spider cage gets pulled into like a port on the side of the ship, you just see her look down, Ziggy. and then whew, it closes. Shit. The next couple of weeks you spend looking for her everywhere, knocking on every door, speaking to every single person, no shame about it. And, and you, you literally go systematically like through the whole of Egalia mm. and, until something clicks for you and you remember the beef that her family has with House Bonk. You find out that they also have vested interests in Akube. And so the best course of action for you to do is to go there. You don't know where exactly, you just know there. And at first you try to get passage upon ships, but they won't let a war go on without an owner. Deem it too dangerous. I don't understand why this is, why can I not come onto the ship? <laughs> Everybody keeps telling you, like, you're a risk. You could go into war mode at any second. Like, they can't allow that. They can't allow it, no matter how sentient you think you are. Eventually, you figure out a way to mail yourself as cargo onto a ship. And that's where you find yourself now, in this dingy crate. I figured it out, it is a genius idea. Just a stamp on your forehead. <laughs> At this point, your crate is sitting close to the kind of makeshift kitchen, which is all the way at the back of the ship and in the bottom. What, sorry, what is the ship called, by the way? Do the, I know? The, yeah, the ship you are on is called the Dead Siren. Dead siren. Okay. Smells um, great, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, this ship has a figurehead that is this skeletal harpy siren kind of figure. And it has this glowing ruby kind of crystal at its center, at its chest. And it emanates a aura of warmth. Because as it's moving through the thick ice sheets that encompass this region, it, it melts the ice in front oh, of the ship cool. oh, wow. yeah. for it to be able to move through. Um, that's why it's called the Dead Siren, because of the, the figurehead, which is this skeletal siren oh. harpy. This crate, which is one of the biggest crates on here, and it's bigger than any crates that normally get on here, is close to the kitchen, where Lily is busy cooking the breakfast for the day. If you would care to describe yourself and what it is you're cooking. Um, sure. Uh, so, so what you see when you look at me is a tiefling. So I've got these horns that go back and really I've got a slender face and it's very regal face. Not really one that is beautiful, but one that you don't really want to look too closely in the eye of, out of fear of really a, a, a upsetting someone who's far above your station, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, just a really uh, strong figure, thin but powerful, purple, dark skin, uh, white, white, clear eyes. Yes, this is, this is Lily Vadu, yes. So no, no pupils, just white eyes? No pupils, just white eyes. Just stare into the deep abyss of my eyes. <laughs> yeah. uh, awesome. And what are you cooking for breakfast? Uh, right now I'm cooking just a little something that we, we, we call it the mix of everything. It's just a little of this, a little of that. And right now you just hear me cutting like... <laughs> just dicing whatever is there and then we put it in a pot and we just, yes, we just, you know. <laughs> and, and yeah, and we just spice it, yeah, sauce, yeah. flavor, whatever, yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, at that point, you tapped on the shoulder and you get a bit of a fright because this man creeped up on you. Uh, what is your passive perception, actually? Let's see if he does okay, creep, sure. on you, creep um, up on you. Is 12. Actually, he doesn't manage. Uh, in the last like second before... What you want? <laughs> ah, uh, 
So and you see this um, very slimy man with this kind of um, tenderly black hair, very like worm tongue kind of guy with some some like missing teeth, rotten teeth, and like pockmarked skin. He's just very gross to look at. Um, and you kind of don't want him near you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Lily. Uh, uh, Captain asked if uh, you can add some spice to the meal. And he takes out something from a pocket. And it's just a jar of some herb crushed up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Captain, he uh, likes to uh, add some exotic things. Uh, <laughs> all of it, he said, uh, just put it in. Oh. And Captain, yeah? Captain told you this? Yeah? Is Captain called Cook? Or is Captain called Captain? <laughs> I'm Cook! But Captain wants to tell me! Oh! Ah! He saw this, you know. Um, I'm scared. He, we don't do. He asked very nicely. Asked very nicely, asked very nicely. Want this, want that. Hey! No one cares about Lily. Everyone wants everything. <laughs> well, I'm very sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay. Thank you, Lily. I don't want to get punished. Mm hmm. It's fine. Leave, leave, leave. You're stinking up the place, yes? <laughs> uh, sorry. And he kind of skulks away. <laughs> was it spice or was it drugs? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you, you see her like separating her portion. Don't <laughs> 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 know what this is. And then... Cool. <laughs> Just mix it in. <laughs> awesome. You guys have docked now at Numaki. Mm -hmm. And you know that before people start packing and you set off, they're gonna have their breakfast. But you usually, as you just did, you put your own breakfast aside because yeah. you know if you don't eat first, you're never gonna eat. Yeah. So you have your portion uh, without whatever spice this is and you prepare the meals and do your duty of taking it to everyone else and the crew has their breakfast. Mm -hmm. And then you come back and you see um, another figure, another shipmate, which is Dwergar. So this um, like blue skin kind of uh, dwarf. Mm -hmm but he's in this mechanical looking suit um, that has attached to it, the one arm is a big hammer and the other arm is this massive like pincer. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's the guy that kind of moves big heavy crates and stuff mm -hmm. around, right? He comes now, as you're heading back to your kitchen, he comes and he grabs the big crate with his pincer arm mm -hmm. and picks it up and starts taking it upstairs. Um, you've been curious about this crate because it is kind of an, an odd one. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't loaded with anything else, it came on its own. So, what do you do at this point? Captain, hmm. what is this big thing? It's been sitting here, sitting here, and I've been cooking, but I feel like there's, you know, something looking at me in the back of my mind, and I don't know what this thing is. What is the thing? As he picks it up now, you're being jostled inside, kind of falling against the sides of the crate. <laughs> Do you say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just be very quiet. Okay, if you want to make a perception check, yeah, see if you can hear sure, that. Sure, definitely. Um, uh, that's 20. Don't, don't, don't worry, Siegfried, you've got this. You've got this. No one will know you're in here. You hear this very... You're, you have keen ears and you hear this, this faint murmuring to itself. He doesn't seem to hear it, but you do. Do you, do you hear that? It's like someone's talking to themselves, telling themselves good things, you know, but... <laughs> hey, why? Why is there noise coming from this box? No one is talking from the box, it's, so everything is perfectly fine. And now it's responding to what I'm saying! <laughs> hey, there's something in this box, man! You're crazy. <laughs> I don't hear anything. And you see, like, the side of his face has been blasted by some kind of, like, shrapnel in the past. <laughs> and, like, his ear and everything is just, like, torn. He's obviously deaf. You don't see anything. You who look like someone took you and took you apart and then forgot some parts when they put you back together. Are you telling me you don't hear anything? Hey, fuck you, man. Fuck <laughs> me? <coughs> fuck you. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, I know. I've been in the kitchen too long. I haven't had time to stretch. You want to go? We'll fight now. Let's go. Let's go. Come. You want to go? Let's go. Let's go. <sighs> Let me take this upstairs and we go. <laughs> hey, there's something in this thing. Put it down. Let's see. No, hey, but Mara. you're right. The, the captain, they'd say something is suspicious about this thing, so they say take it upstairs. 
All right, then we go upstairs. Let's go. What's this? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> inside, inside the box, like not saying it out loud, but like thinking to himself, he's like, everything is fine. <laughs> everything is. You've got this. And I respond, it's not fine. I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, I was man. pretty sure I was I was thinking that and not whispering that. <laughs> Eventually he makes up to the main main deck. And at this point there is a commotion as the captain now steps forward and um, you see the captain and the first mate. Uh, the captain is this tall um, bugbear uh, dressed in kind of almost too regal captain, you know, what he think a captain of a ship should be wearing. <laughs> but, I mean, it kind of looks good on him. He doesn't really have to wear thick furs and clothes because he has his own thick fur. And then next to him is a first mate, someone who you guys might know from somewhere else in the world, some other time, some other people, but in, in this time, in this place, um, you don't know the little blonde halfling man called Pompey. Who is <laughs> who is the first mate of this ship um, before some other ships? And they're standing there, and the captain is looking at this thing. All right. So where does it come from then? Anybody? We just load things onto the ship without checking. Them. Is that what we're doing now? Hey, this captain, this captain, but he's asking us questions. You captain, you must know these things, Mara. Hey. I'm not in... If your food wasn't so good, I would throw you into those icy waters. Hey, hey, what can I say? That's why I'm here. Well, open it up then. Oh dear, this is not <laughs> going to end well. You see a bunch of crew members starting with crowbars and stuff, starting to peel the crate away and it sort of falls in this big <laughs> automaton. Immediately, like, at first, Sigrid is like, Oh, Scheiße. But then he just like, eyes go red again. He sees everything around him. He feels a bit threatened. So then he just like stands up full eight feet tall, like assessing threat, assessing threat. And he kind of like, his legs stay with her and his torso spins around, just like scanning everybody. Because I assume there's a few people on this. Yeah, yeah. It's the whole is, like, crew is kind of surrounding you. And his arms like start like this sound starts coming off of it. And it's like almost like steam. Yes. Assessing threat, assessing, and then I kind of Everyone his head. does start drawing like cutlasses and whatever. <laughs> and then he just shakes his head legal. and his eyes go back to this like blue and his eyes go big and he's like, he slouches. He's like, uh, he hello, I'm Siegfried, pleased to meet you all. Hello, just, uh, what is this box doing here? Is this... Oh, this isn't where I parked my wagon. <laughs> <laughs> the blonde halfling uh, first mate guy um, turns to him. Captain, this is a uh, war golem, if I'm not mistaken. I knew it. <laughs> I told you. Where's that? Where's that half thing? Hey. She was right. I was in there. It was. I was kind of looking at you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know I'm beautiful, but eh. Well, that's no good. We can't have a war golem on a ship. Who, who, who sent this? Check, check, check the ledgers. Who sent this thing on uh, here? I have a name. It is Siegfried. Uh, Vogolem is kind of, you know, it's, t t t t I'm not that dangerous. I just need some passage. Well, of course, someone who's dangerous will say they're not dangerous. That's what you would say. You cannot be unaccompanied on the ship. Why not? Because you are built for killing things. No, but I also make things and I take out like this beautiful clockwork album. It was like, whoa! Like, <laughs> and I just, back, I like it's a bomb. Up. This is like a little clockwork out. Like I made it, I made a few other things and I take out like a little clockwork butterfly and it starts like flying. The, this kind of slimy worm tiny dude like just jumps and hides beneath some barrels as soon as you start winding things up. No, no, we can't have this. Take this thing off the ship, drop it right here. I, do, I, do, I, don't, I don't care what you do with it. It cannot continue this journey. At this point, uh, dust, you, you walk up the gangplank, you walk. Uh, okay, here we go, off to Akube, and, and I see all of this happening? Yeah, you see all of this commotion happening. Whoa. You hear them explaining that he can't be unaccompanied on the ship. Um, he needs, uh, you, hear, you hear them, like, there's not just this, this massive debate going back and forth about, like, who sent this thing, we need to check it, some people are looking for papers. The captain just keeps going on, like, we can't have it unaccompanied where its owner needs to be accompanied if, if automatons are traveling with, um, and you hear all of this. Cool, I, I walk up to him and I, because I come from a 
people in a tribe that are metallurgists and work with metal, I see this like mass of metal and I'm like, oh, this is a very beautiful craftsmanship. Who, who made this? Oh, hello. My oh name my God, is Siegfried. Nice what? to meet you, friend. Okay, calm down. We're not friends. We're not, not yet, maybe. <laughs> I, hopefully we could be friends. I, I didn't even know you could talk until like five seconds ago. I, okay, I, calm down. No, sh I'm talking now. Okay. I'm just... Who made this? Well, uh, that's why I wanted to answer. To see, I was kind of... Hilda, my best friend. You'd, you'd love her. Very, very, you guys would be best friends too. Um, she kind of fixed me up, and uh, but some a lot of these improvements I made myself. So in a way, I, I made myself. Is that kind of possible? I know it sounds a bit weird, but it's kind yeah, of that, no. That is uh, impressive. Uh, or someone else made me. I kind of fixed me up, and you know, it's is, well, yeah, very good. Anyway, I need to get on the ship. I'm trying to talk to the captain now. I just oh, it's the, the conversation over now. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> have a nice day or whatever. Thank you. Have a nice day too. <laughs> any waves? Um, just like walk past him. This, this is not a passenger ship. Uh, we got we. Oh God. This is a cargo ship. Okay. We only do crates and barrels and barrels and crates and crates and barrels. That's all we do. Well, uh, I don't take up much space. I just need to hop on for a few days and... I also do take cooking. up much space. You take up a lot of space, okay? If there's room for one, it's gonna be me. Look. She's very convincing. Mm. Yes. Charming, thank you. Okay. I have some proposition because I don't want to disappoint whoever it is that sent this thing. So if you can promise to take responsibility for it, you're putting your <laughs> babies? Friend. Oh, God. Is that the only way you are going to let me onto ship? Yes. Either both of you are on, or both of you are off. Fine. And I would need some, some fee for passage, of course. Oh, you want money? I'm looking after this death machine, and you want money? Do I have any money? Yeah, does he have uh, money? Do you have money? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, <should> have, <laughs> he should have your starting money. Um, um, which was, should, should be something, yeah. It would probably be like 15 gold or something. Okay. I take all the money I have and like, here you go, is this enough? Mm, yeah, so just, just barely. <laughs> and you see his wide bugbear grin <laughs> kind of creep up into the fur to the point where you can't see the edge of the edges of his mouth anymore. Uh, Yilda was right, it is like a gift. People get so happy. <laughs> yes, very happy, my friend. He takes it and then stuffs it in a pocket. Hello, I am Siegfried. You haven't told me your name yet. You have said that so many times. And dust. Ah, like the thing on... Don't <laughs> be careful what you say next. Okay. Hello, dust. There we go. Friend. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we will be best friends. No. And just by the way, I don't eat, but your cooking smells very good. You can't eat. Uh, how do you smell it also? That is a design flaw, I guess, that to always be wanting something that you can never have. Well, that is oh. crushingly said. Well, uh, thank you, I guess. I don't know how um, it feels, really, because you've never eaten anything, so how do you know what tastes good? But anyway... It, sm it smells good. I can still smell, like, I just can't taste. Oh, thank you. Once again, probably a cruel joke from my makers, I don't know. <laughs> they were funny. <laughs> I'm Siegfried. Hello, oh, friend. Uh, and then I take like my ladle. Sure. And I shake it like <laughs> cartoonishly. Like. <laughs> at, at this point, you see the captain now strutting off and just telling Pompey to get things running. All right, everyone. Um, we're we're going to set off, okay? Uh, so just get, get everything ready, wrap it up, we, we, we're going, we're going to Akube, okay? Let's let's do this. Theme? Theme and everyone, no one's like really listening to him. <laughs> I immediately like, Siegfried, I'm ready to help. Uh, really? Okay, well, um, 
uh, and he starts like telling you like things that need to be moved and lost like the gangplanks need to be pulled up and certain ropes need to be tied and he, he's, and you you go about helping him actually whereas a bunch of the other crew members are still taking a smoke. And, <laughs> I, I told Jesse, ha, look at him, he's so happy someone's listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> I take it the small one, nobody listens to him. <laughs> yeah, he tries, shame. <laughs> and I, Sikri tries his best to, to do the best job that he can for this poor people. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, he He's so happy, he's just like smiling. Um, doesn't have many very for very many friends on the <laughs> ship. Sure. No one listens, listens to him. And the ship takes off. And you set off into the icy expanse of the ocean. Ice that clogs the frigid waters as far as the eye can see. Around are big, larger chunks and slushes of fragments. And you see on the horizon f um, one of the floating like icebergs in the distance. You've heard stories of lairs of white dragons and such things around this, this parts and other scary monsters in the frigid waters. But instead, you focus on the plume of water that gets sprayed by some uh, hump of a whale that just crests the water and goes back down. Maybe it's a whale. I start drooling a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> One day. <laughs> Siegfried is just like, this is technically his first time. It is uh, beautiful out here, no? It is so beautiful, yes. friend. Okay, this is going to be a <laughs> I'm problem. I'm glad we I'm can share this moment. No, we're not sharing. Together. We are not sharing anything. I made a comment to the ether, and who is ether? Oh. Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm also gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go find the cook. This is ridiculous. Uh, Bye, um, friend. Oh God! As the ship is just taking off, it hasn't set very far yet. Newt, you've watched these ships go out every now and then, and you've always considered maybe I should just get on one of those. But this day is different, because this day you received a missive, a quickly scrawled letter on a piece of torn paper that seems to have been done very hastily. Ooh. And it is of particular interest to you of where this ship is going. Nudie Pie. Why does she have to call me that? I hate <laughs> that name. I don't have much time unobserved. If you are looking for me, find a man in Port Nsanji, Akube, called w Wakundi. He knows a Sultan Okish Shazari. They are coming. You get the sense that that last line, you see it becomes less sentences towards the end and just like singular words. So she was trying to get it out quicker so that their coming is whoever is not meant to see this letter, where she is, yeah, they're coming. And so she finished it hastily. And this was brought to you by some sprite that appeared from a, a portal and brought this letter to you and then went back. Oh, so this is from, well, that would make sense. If why would I be looking for her? Wait, does that mean she's no longer... Where the hell is Akube? You're always curious to know where the ships are going because every time they go, you contemplate like, ah, should I get on one? Mm -hmm. And you've had this letter now for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that would be the first time you read it, which is maybe a couple of days ago. But now you've heard there's a ship going to Akube. So now, now you're standing on the shore, watching it just about to set off, but you can fly. So you're like, ah, should I go? Well, this place fucking sucks. So yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. Just, uh, I, I look around, try to see if any of my um, other watchers or wardens or anybody else is around or paying attention or if I'm kind of... Not at present? Yeah, peace. <laughs> so I like, um, it, I like try to kind of wait for the ship to start to pull off. Um, and then, you know, I imagine it's kind of like navigating between flows and icebergs or whatever. So I'm going to like uh, kind of hover just right above the waves and like dodge in and out. And if there's some, um, uh, I'm going to time it with some, you know, like crashing wave that sends a plume of smoke foam up into the air. I want to like 
fly up and like nestle myself amongst the rigging somewhere so where I can kind of like I imagine you know there's a crow's nest uh, and I'm going to pin myself right to the bottom of the crow's nest yeah. so that the person up top can't see me but I can just kind of like fold under the, the rope ladder or whatever and just kind of sit and watch and have a crow's eye view cool go ahead and make a stealth check as you do that 13? Mm, yeah. At this present, um, most of the people are still concerned with a freaking war golem on the ship. It Ooh. is a real concern. Um, so they're not really paying attention to any other kind of threats that might appear, or just anything in general, really. They're kind of set about doing their jobs. So you land there. For the next hour or so, the ship slowly... It's not full sail because they can't just go crashing through icebergs. It has this kind of slow process of the ice melting and the ship slowly moving through the slush. Where, where are you guys at this, uh, this present moment? Let me ask that first. As far away from him <laughs> as is humanly possible to be. Are you be. just following her? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of like trying to make friends with all, this, all the people on the ship. I've tried going into the kitchen. I don't know if I fit in there. No, will you be allowed in there? It's my place. Um, <laughs> I've, in there. I've tried to make friends with the captain. I don't understand hierarchy, so I just was <coughs> like, um, I can just go into his cabin and try and make friends with him. Probably chased out. Um, <laughs> so probably hanging with Bumpy okay. uh, on the on the deck and just kind of like looking at. It's amazing because it's the first time that uh, Siegfried has gone from Igalia, except for the time when he was still his old war god himself. Yeah. Cool. So you're you're hanging with Pompey like on the main deck. No. Um, where are you at this present? Uh, I'd probably be somewhere below deck, okay. maybe chilling close to the kitchen, trying to get a meal. <laughs> <laughs> cool, kind of, kind of just waiting. But the, the food's gone. So the the, the initial pot that you cooked, that was like mm. that was scoffed yeah. up by the crew. Do you have any like yeah. snacks? I'm, or I'm like just that? cleaning the kitchen probably at this point as well. Okay. Uh, kind of just begging for some scraps. Yeah, just there. trying to find something what to eat. You want? Just, you know, anything lying around that nobody else ate. So you just leave and you don't bring food and I mean, just expect people to give you food. Look, I have rations, but they're kind of, you know... You have food and now you're asking for food. Well, I thought maybe, you know, you can cook a nice meal. I could smell it before I came on board and I thought I'd, you know, ask. Oh, oh. so I'm your cook now. Well, oh, so I cook for you now. Come on, I mean... Oh. <laughs> no, it's fine, I'm kidding. Ah, you see. <laughs> And I knew I was charming. You, you're still hanging off the crow nest. I probably also smell the food. Um, and like, do you do you give her a plate then? Um, yeah, I just try to work something up quickly. Yeah. Um, I would probably kind of having watched the ships for a couple of days. I don't know how frequently I've had an opportunity to eat. Um, so she kind of takes her meal up onto deck or something, and so I, um, I'm gonna try to swipe her plate when she's not looking. 100%. So I would like probably either kind of crawl down the mast or whatever, and uh, just kind of like wait till she's distracted by the overly friendly uh, piece of metal, or um, <laughs> rude, you know. So, <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm gonna wait for my moment, and then I'm gonna go in and uh, swipe her plate. Make a stealth or a sleight of hand check versus your percept your yeah your passive perception I guess just my passive that. perception yeah. okay that's a dirty twenty thirteen <laughs> you you put the food down and and like you turn around for just a second to look at like down the down inside the ship like what all, what the things are all packed there. You kind of consider getting into one of the hammocks and having a little lay down while you eat. And as you turn around to grab your plate, psh, gone. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm probably like behind a couple of barrels or something, uh -huh. just kind of sitting. Hey, who took my food? And at this moment, wherever each of you are on the main deck, the three of you are down here, you just see crew members start dropping like flies. Mm -hmm. You see one guy swabbing the deck and sort of uh, looks at the mop and drops it and then Hello, are you okay there? Like, sort of, uh, passes out, and then you just see one by one, everybody, the captain, Pompey, all the crew members, hey. drop to the floor, except for... I promise it wasn't me. I promise it wasn't me. I don't know what's happening. It can't be food poisoning, right? <laughs> you, on main deck, you notice the slimy guy is the only one that didn't drop. 
Do we know by this time what his name is? Um, Have we met him? We haven't uh, talked to him or anything? Not really, no. Um, Slimy guy. Do I see that they see him as well? No, you guys are below there. Oh, yeah, cool, cool. But what you see is that Dwergar guy coming down, yeah. downstairs there, yes. um, and look, oh shit. And climbing through holes that are usually um, gun ports on the side yes. of the ship, but on this ship they don't really have a lot of cannons because yeah. um, they need more weight and, and space for cargo. You see climbing into three various holes in here, or actually two down here and, and one other guy on top where you are, you see three Odeben people, mm. three of these walrus folk people <coughs> climb onto the ship and into the ship. And they so we see it as well? You guys see two at the bottom. Okay. You see one at yeah. the top and you, you see the slimy guy and you guys see the Dwergar guy. And there's a look between them and then they look at you like confused, like why are there still people standing up? Hey, hello! Hey, fool him! Did you do this? What the hell? You, you. And this is one of the Audubon people, like the biggest looking walrus guy. Um, big whiskers and he's got this like, Big red cloak on that's well, like furry, furry cloak. You can see it's really nice and warm, although they don't need that because they have this thick yeah. blubber and have these huge tusks. And they're kind of like, <laughs> I know it doesn't exist in this world, but you know those guys that wear the one color tracksuits with like too much chains and, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and they give off that vibe. Okay. <laughs> I know yeah. these guys, they are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so this guy's like, what the hell? You said everyone piss out! Who these people? And he's asking this of the Dwergar guy. I don't know what happened. They all, everybody ate the food. I, I don't know who did this. They weren't meant to be here. And he's pointing to like you. Well, I'm, I'm, you're I'm, behind I'm, the crate. So he's just pointing to you. Uh, you're upstairs. And, all right, and, time and, for a flight. At this point, I take my knife. <laughs> hey! You chose the wrong kitchen today. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to taste what water is. tastes like. Hey, you're going to make. Great lunch, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and with that... I also pull out my bow, I've got it ready. A secret would probably be like, oh, you are just in time, these people all fainted. Are you the help? Are you like the medical team? <laughs> so, um... Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like, when, when he said everybody eats the food, I, I pop up, or ate the food, I pop up with like a half-eaten chicken bone. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it's not the same food, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. But he, I don't know that. Yeah, you don't know. It was that. like. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. with that, we will roll finished. But let's take a quick break here first. Oh. Good. Okay, so we are back here on the Dead Siren in the icy waters. You've just seen the entire crew of the ship just drop like flies all around. You don't know what the hell is going on. You might. <laughs> you did it. Um, I did nothing. You have an inkling, perhaps, but it wasn't really your fault, was it? In any case, everybody's dropping, except these two guys, the one kind of slimy dude whose name you don't know, and Dwergar, a guy who's in the full kind of mech suit with the pincer and the hammer, and you see these Odoben, these walrus folk, climbing onto the ship. Two below deck and one up top. It's raw initiative. <laughs> All right, dice, don't fail me now. Yeah. Initiative, who has higher than 20, anyone? Okay, 20. 21. 21, cool. Um, 15 to 20? No one? <laughs> 10 to 15? 13, 14, 10. Okay, 14, 13, okay, so... So right now, three of you are below deck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of you is top uh, dust. We're gonna start with you. So I need to unpack this whole thing. <gasps> oh no way! No way, dude. Yeah. Is this three three D printed or? Uh huh. What well, really? Yeah. Eight. So, oh my what? god! I'm gonna put these off to the side. Okay. No, there's oh. even another layer. That's crazy. Oh, that's like an onion. <laughs> <laughs> So that's where. Okay. cake. It was a cake! <laughs> so oh my god. What is. We'll just unpack the layers so that you can move freely wherever you want to move. Oh, that's that's ridiculous. Of course, there are also these ice sheets if you ever want to go in there. We just move the, the parts along. Sure. Right, yeah. so. Um, where am I? You guys are currently. Oh, hidden behind. Down here. Um, you're hidden behind some barrels over here. 
Yeah. Newt's, where you were eating the stolen food. You were in your kitchen. You guys saw the Autobahn guys come up through these kind of slits in the side of the ship. Oh, oh shit. So oh, ship. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> get out. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. Um, I'm, I'm impressed that they fit through those cannon ports. <laughs> Maybe they can... The blubber and the oil. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're just... Blubber. Mm. It really is the slimy guy. Oh. All right, so, Dust, it is you up first. You, your meal has just been stolen, but that doesn't seem to be the most important thing right now. No, no. As these walrus folk, who you know, you know the Autobahn, they are, at best, they are just super grumpy assholes, but at worst, they can be downright malicious. Cool, I've got no love for these people. No, yeah. not really. They feel that Numaki and the Frigid South should belong to them, mm. and only them. Okay. Yeah, in any case, you see them climb aboard now. You still don't know who stole your food. Uh, what would you like to do? <laughs> Briefly think about my meal, and then um, I'm assuming these guys aren't exactly the same size. There's one that looks like a little bit bigger. Yeah, there's it. the main guy um, who had spoken previously and asked what the hell is going on. That's that guy over there. All right, uh, cool. Holding the fish. <laughs> He's not actually holding a fish. That's just the mini. Is the uh, Durgar with them, or was he? He is over there on the main deck. Okay. And you were up here on the back castle deck with Pompey, who is now laying <laughs> passed yeah, out okay. next to you. Okay. Classic Pompey. Okay, I am going to, first of all, cast Hunter's Mark as my bonus action. Okay, uh, Go for it. And cast it on Big Boy over there. Big Boy. Big Boy. Cool, and then I am going to pull out my trusty bow. I've got a bow on my back. It's I've basically have it all the time. It looks like it's carved from like a giant jawbone, like it's two parts of a jawbone that's been split oh, like cool. that, and that's basically my bow. It's still got like little bits of teeth in it. It's got some beautiful carvings in it that I've sort of carved myself. Um, it's like white, white kind of bow. Um, I'm gonna whip that around from my back and then aim for this guy. Um, so you've, hunt, you've put a hunter's mark on him. I've got hunter's mark on him. Uh, and then I wanted to ask, the arrows that my mm. mother gave me, mm. are they just like regular arrows? There's no particular properties about them? She didn't particularly tell you, as <clears throat> um, you also didn't really ask her. Uh, True. If you wanted to, you could have fashioned a few of them uh, in the nights last night. I'll, I'll say you maybe put on like three arrowheads. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So cool. just tell me which ones you're shooting with. I'm just going to use my normal arrows for now. Okay, cool. I've just got a quiver of about 20 arrows that I just normally have. Cool. Um, cool. I'm going to take aim and try and shoot this bitch. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. Plus eight. So that is 25 to hit. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then he hit. And then Hunter's Mark is a d6 as well, I believe. Okay. Going for the fish or the Morris guy? I mean, definitely for his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible rolls, terrible oh. rolls. It's not oh. good. So it's almost a reactionary shot as these guys come crawling through these holes. You just like, without even thinking about it. Totally, I wasn't, I was just a bit disoriented. I'm still sad about my missing food. <laughs> and I take the shot, and that is going to do five plus two, so seven points of damage. He takes the arrow, and immediately they're like, okay, it's on. <laughs> you see them taking out axes and spears and things. He has a, a kind of a net on his side, a spear in the other hand, but then he's also kind of clutching tightly to this, uh, what looks to be a narwhal, uh, what do you call it, horn, I guess? I guess, yeah. <laughs> Next up, the kind of, the, I'm just gonna keep calling him the slimy guy. <laughs> uh, he comes out of the captain's quarters and looks at this Audubon. You'll hear this, okay. Siegfried. Is everyone down? And she just looks and motions up at you. Hello. Ah, shit. And he immediately turns around and looks up at you and he's going to loose a heavy crossbow at you. Oh, As that sounds very nice. Sets That's it up. Friends don't shoot crossbows at each other. <laughs> he doesn't even friends. reply. He just loads it up and <laughs> loses it at you. Uh, that'll probably hit. It's 
16 plus 2, 18. That does not hit. No. <laughs> I, yeah, I have my, immediately take out my, my shield, and even without my shield, it's all in it. Okay. Jeez, bro. <laughs> Talk um, about it. It just yeah, bounces off my own. Just, <laughs> just like deflects. That tickles. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the game? <laughs> um, he's he's going to go for another shot because it's a quick loading one. Oh. Okay. Um, nope. This one just misses completely as he's kind of like nervously fumbling now. With what the, is happening? Why uh, is this a game we're playing? Uh, yeah, game. <laughs> you stand, I shoot. <laughs> okay, game. I'll play along, and my arms. I'm not uh, t taking my turn, but mm. it's just like preparing. Like you see, my arms start like vibrating, and it's almost like this weird sound coming from it. Like, <laughs> like I'll play as well. Then. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Backing away a little bit. I actually just want to do this so you guys know what's up. Gotta reverse the sight, so that's from you. Oh, oh cool. Cool. so you guys that's know great. the order of things. Oops. So Lily and Lily? you tell made these beautiful. Um... Oh, this is uh, of course <laughs> Nina right here. I wouldn't possibly know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Nina made these so lovely cool. cards for us. Our secrets are cute. My giant was a big inspiration. <laughs> cool. So now you guys know the initiative order, and you can. No, when you're coming up, okay. Yo. which means Lily, you are next. Das, you tenderize that one up for me first, and now I'll get back to him later. Done. You? I'm on it. You, let's go. Okay, so then I go. I go. Now oh, you can turn the table. Ah, okay, cool. Whoa. Whoa. See? It's alive. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna go up to this one, and I'm gonna take a swipe at it. Um. You need me to move it? Yeah, please, thank you. <laughs> yeah, bitch. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. I'm just gonna take a swipe at him. Running up to that closest one, what is your weapon? Short sword. Short yes. sword, okay. Very sharp because I sharpen it regularly with the rest of my knives. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's 16 to hit? Yeah, that'll hit. They're mostly exposed. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, they have their blubber and their fur to protect them. That is six damage. It's like a, there's still like some hesitation here as to uh -huh. what the hell's happening. So you're like, uh, <laughs> 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 just go for a tap. Like, okay, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> it's not a very deep one, and you also don't know where to hit this thing with all the blubber that's surrounding it to yeah. to, to like be the most effective. Newt, you're kind of now peering out behind the barrels, seeing I, all of this. I'm I'm a little confused as to what's going on. Why a bunch of people have fallen asleep? Seems like the ship is not going to a coupe right now, um, but I'm still kind of enjoying this meal. Uh, <laughs> and I, I don't really know about these guys, these walrus dudes, but I want to find out why ship has stopped. Okay. And I'm, I'm, so what I'd like to do is, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm hidden behind these barrels. I want to crawl out this cannon port right here mm -hmm. and just like leave this deck entirely. Sure. And then fly up kind of behind to see uh, the slimy dude. Mm. Like, so I would fly up to try to look at the main deck to get a get a perspective of what's going on. Cool. Um, so... You do it sneakily? Yes, I tried to do okay. it sneakily. So yeah, roll the stealth check. We still don't know he's there, right? Oh, no. it's, a, it's a natural oh 18 plus 5, so 23. Oh, yeah. um, so I go out there, mm -hmm. pop out there, and then like flutter up to right right over here okay and i see like i'd see that you know there's a couple of he's holding an empty crossbow or whatever he had used mm -hmm. and he looks like he's a little bit more in charge and he looks a little shifty yeah, and how far is this guy from because this this part of the ship is part of yeah, yeah. so so right now the, this guy here actually who's the duergar guy with the pincer and the hammer he's actually opened up that hatch and is sort of like upside down peering into the bottom looking at you guys but simultaneously popping up kind of scoping okay. out both both decks at the same time i'd like to float up onto this kind of uh, thing here mm -hmm. and um pull out my bag of ball bearings okay mm. and then just kind of Toss it right here. Okay. Uh, trying to trying to make a little bit like so. That's my interact with object, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna uh, whip 
the, okay. the this guy. So you jump, jump, guy. jump up and see the rat lines. There. Yeah. So I'm holding onto the rat lines. I I toss a bag of ball bearings down, uh-huh. and then I like whip him. You know, just you know, trying to for flavor, trying to grab him by the neck or something. Just like I'd say, if if you wanna, you can choose whether you want to do that whip damage or try and actually grab him and yank him onto the floor, potentially. Sp- spilling onto the the ball bearings you can do that um i do have a uh, snare whip feature okay go for um it. so i'll try to do that am i hidden from them or does yeah make your make a stealth roll um well so i made the 23 one to crawl out the window earlier okay yeah so. sure we'll use that okay um, um i don't think anyone's passive perception is going to see that so you're just no one knows you're here <laughs> <laughs> basically they will now 22 to hit it hit. misses <laughs> <laughs> And well, it does six damage, and he needs to make a strength saving throw. Okay. Or be restrained. Oh, he rolled a Natty Twins. Oh, he succeeds. At the moment of whipping him, you grab him, try to yank him in a direction, and he kind of does slip on some ball bearings for a bit, but then he grabs onto that mm. wooden structure there that's meant for ropes to tie it, and he kind of steals himself against it mm-hmm. for a bit. Um, but I'll say, on each creature's turn, as they try and move about, they're going to have to try and navigate these ball bearings. Okay. So, But Great. for now, he's he's, he's all right. He's, he's holding onto something, but he takes the damage as a heavy whip cracks across his back and his shoulder. Nice. All right. You see now the creature right next to him starts to motion. I actually just want to pop these off and we can see each other better. Oh, oh yeah, perfect. Unless, when I, if anybody goes up, then we can put them back oh, on. Yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> that Otto Ben now um, looks about, tries to look for you. Uh, I'll say it's, it's not that hard for them to see you now as they look no, in the direction no, I, I of the whip, yeah. Um, so they are going to, they take a look at Siegfried and like, mm, I'm not going to fuck with that right now. <laughs> um, and rather look at the small creature and they cast Guiding Bolt. Okay. Yeah, that's not necessary. <laughs> they conjure this icy blue streak of lightning as they wave this um, staff they have around. Stuff is kind of these bone tips and kind of like a fish figure at its head. Um, and it's going to go for attack roll. That's going to be 12. Nope. He just like leans back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you shooting at? I still don't see this thing. Uh, it's kind of like going up to what you, the bolt actually flies past your face and you're like, what's going on? Um, at this point, you do notice Newt as well as he kind of leans back on the rat lines to dodge this attack. They all turn around and kind of just form like a cohesive unit now. It's the two of them and this guy over here all turning around facing you and you, Siegfried. Okay, first of all, Siegfried notices um, Newton. He's like, oh, hello, little friends. And his eyes go red and he's like, assessing danger, assessing danger. And he focuses on you for a bit as if he was going to attack you. And he's like, no, I think they are more dangerous. I don't think you're playing a game at all. I think, and he looks back at Bumpy. I think you hurt my friend Bumpy. Um, are they still in the same positions there? And I'm kind of above them, right? Yeah, they they just yeah. kind of turn to face you and are looking defensive. Oh, so you're up above me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's up yeah. there. Yeah. And where are the ball bearings currently? On this lower deck. All on this deck. Oh, yeah. actually, and she, she, she sorry, this one, right? Here. She she actually had to make a save to not fall on glass. Yeah, she does all right. It's a bit of stumbling, but also holds on to the So rails. from my, if I come all the way to the front, mm-hmm. so that I can kind of see them, yeah, would, and a 15 foot cube from myself, would those two kind of fit in there? Yes, yeah. I'd say if you just go to the the other side of the wheel. So if I'm like there. Um, yeah, then they definitely. Okay. I'm probably in the he, cube. He'd also I be will, in the cube. I will try and do it. He's, he's I'm, 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 I'm technically hanging yeah. right here. So he'd be right. Oh, but if I aim it down so that it, it aims at them and not misses him, it, I'd uh, say you can you can give him a heads up as well, kind of just to lean out of the way. Uh, you should move out of the way, but little buddy. I kind of pat you on the head, um, <laughs> <laughs> but endearingly, not patronizing me. <laughs> Pivot. So these sounds come. It's like from these massive forearms of mine, and I'm like. 
Yeah, I think uh, I think this is no game at all. <sighs> but uh, maybe it's time for some Donnerwelle. <laughs> and I slap like Hulk smash my hands together and cast Thunder Wave. Oh, um, they have to do a constitution saving throw against... Uh, two, well, uh, 14. Nope, they're both going to pay Nice. They take uh, nine points of thunder damage and they push Damn. ten feet away. And everything, um, in addition, unsecured objects, um, so all those ball bearings, any, anything that <laughs> on that deck with them um, gets shotgun ten feet away as well. Okay, <clears throat> so this thunderous clap just reverberates and these ball bearings, they go like, fly, well, ten feet back. Yeah. There is a gap in the railing there. I'm just going to make uh, a deck save. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, she actually gets pushed 10 feet back through that gap in the railing, which is used for the gangplank, um, the, the yes, Audubon, and falls overboard. Oh, oh what? As they get pushed 10 feet back. The other guy they just gets flipped over that um, piece and he's now on that deck. Over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are they pro? Or they just get pushed uh, back? Be, like, um, off, off the ship, right? Or maybe yeah. Off the deck. Away. This one? Like, oh, off the ship onto a sheet of ice. Which... Okay, so right here. Um, oh, it doesn't, nice. doesn't say, right? It doesn't say yes, but um, he went onto a ship. Prone, it just oh, says yeah. push 10 feet okay. away. Yeah, so he's. Oh. Falls back, stands back up. Should we put these two pieces together so that it's more? Um, well, there's still people on the lower deck, though. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Like this, uh, this piece, uh, stand with oh. says. Oh, in front, yeah. Okay. And shift things around a bit. Put this piece. Ooh. Let's put that there. Put this here. Where did the ball bearings end up? The ball bearings. Everywhere. <laughs> the ball bearings and the thunder smack just go like. Shotgun rig shape. <laughs> just bouncing over stuff everywhere. I need everyone, um, everyone <laughs> in that area to make deck saves. And people standing on the deck have disadvantage because of the ball bearings? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Oh, you're, you're on a lower deck, aren't you? Yeah, oh, we, we should be okay. One. No, yeah. just the people. Oh, yeah, no. just, just this. Well, basically, you and Siegfried and these guys. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, deck save the right? Yeah. They all fail. I don't, I'm rolling. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay, that's that's fine. For you, it's just like bing, 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 bing. Yeah, <laughs> that tickles. Okay, uh, you see this coming just in the nick of time, and you sort of swing the rat lines around and just hide behind the mast as as little balls come like peg into the mast itself. Yeah, you guys are fine. They all take four points of damage. Hectic. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then. I will use my movement to get, I will jump off, probably crack the fucking ship as I land on the wood, and I will get as close to them as I can, especially the uh, slimy guy. Okay, cool. I have 30 feet of movement. I'll, f yeah, I should be able to get pretty close to them. Do you think 30 feet I'd be able to get there? Yeah, I, I should. Um, especially with some downward momentum coming down yeah. the stairs. <laughs> Great train. Now, if it hasn't been out already, my shield kind of like just comes out of my arm and like I'm ready. Cool. Next up, you see this guy down here, the kind of bigger boss looking other Ben in the corner of that. It's a fishy one. Why you mess with my plants? It will see. And he just. Starts uh -oh. running <laughs> towards you, Dust. He's, uh -oh. he's quite a big guy. Do I get attack of opportunity where he runs past me? Or no? Um, no, he's okay. he's far I'm enough away right to, and you're you're kind of engaged with your own uh, thing right there. And he does a body flop. He just full on leaps <laughs> a body <laughs> flop. <and> what? <laughs> Walrus body slam. <laughs> Rude. Uh, ooh, that's a 19, almost a 20. That definitely hits. 20 from 25. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 yeah, you look, you're looking around like, oh fuck. Where can I go? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, and he comes. And you, and you thought Siegfried was invading your personal space. Jeez, mm -hmm. yeah, no respect for my bubble, these motherfuckers. That would be 17 points of damage as this massive walrus Ooh. dude just slams onto you. Absolutely. Damn! <laughs> 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 just hear the shark go boom, I'm like, hey, are you fine back there? No, I'm very not okay. 
To add insult to injury, that's eight plus six, also gonna hit. Um, okay, he, he just pulls out a little like ice shard dagger, and while he's on top of you, like oh. you're all this fat and blubber in your face, he just like shits you in the side. Fake death for ruining day. I'm going to find you and kill you. <laughs> you're gonna have to find him. He's right on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, See if he's that'd be six six points of oh, six saying. points. Okay. Hmm. Not nice. No. The I'm bleeding. The other guy who's engaged with you, Lily, uh, he he um, is going to whip out a great axe mm-hmm. his back and recklessly attack you. Yeah. Oh boy. Twenty to hit. Yeah, hits. Everything's going great up here. I wonder how so they're doing down there. Ten points of damage as he comes for like this low angle swing that <laughs> as you. Jump out of the way, but it gasses you across your stomach. Ha! And then I go, you hit like you look soft. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then I use my reaction to Hellish Rebuke. Okay, and go for it. Awesome. I, I point, as I point, I say, stop. Uh, what does your Hellish Rebuke look like? No, I just, I just, I just point and just do this, yeah. <laughs> and then it's just, and, and, then, uh, and then the fire just like comes off my hand and just jumps on them. Okay, cool. um, so they have to make a deck saving throw. Cool. Absolutely. Um, that's a 19. That's a save, yep. Two save from that, they sort of lean over backwards back through the cannon hole and sort of grab onto the sides of the window frame and just as it burns over top of them and then come back in. So they take only half uh, damage. Then. Okay. And that is. Ooh, that's bad. One, essentially, is what they take, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it <laughs> just singes the, the fur on the top of his face, oh, comes man. back, blackened. <laughs> Eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, you'll taste delicious. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the Dwergar guy in his suit now. Well, this is interesting. And like these two big mechanical dudes facing off towards each other, and you see like you fight the same <laughs> the same way you started like firing up pistons and smoke coming out. He now also his hammer starts to like <laughs> like have this hammer action, and his pinches go. Let's do this, Jaegers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's gonna come in immediately for one like hammering swing with that. Uh, mm, probably not gonna hit fifty. No, 15, no. You, shield. Shield. <laughs> you feel the impact of it. Oh. And then he, over the top of the shield, oh my god, I'm running like shit. Um, over the top of the shield, he comes in for the pincer, but you just kind of like hold him off. At this rate, I think we can't be friends anymore. I think that ship has sailed. <laughs> yeah, so your guys are kind of stuck in, in, in that motion right now. Him trying to get you, you're holding him off with the shield. Now kiss. <laughs> I don't have a tongue. <laughs> or lips. You hear this commotion upstairs dust. You hear this heavy impact of like hammers and pincers and metal on metal. Um, and you have this walrus dude playing on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're having a time, basically. I'm having too much of a time, if anything. What would you like to do? It's your turn. Oh, it was my turn. Yeah. Shit, shit, shit. Um, okay, I'm... Presumably restrained at this point? Technically not. Okay. Um, you've just like, you've managed to like push him up and you guys are sort of in this semi grappling, like wrestling match, um, but you can push him off and, and do move. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, he's still got Hunter's Mark active, right? Oh, I need to roll full concentration. All right, go for that. Sorry, I forgot. No, Hunter's <laughs> Mark is gone. Okay. I lose my concentration, which is <laughs> that, understandable. That body flop just caught you. Yeah, it just, <laughs> it, he rung my bell. It's yeah. uh, it's not. However, uh, I'm gonna take him and kind of like try and roll over so I'm sort of on top of him, mm-hmm. and uh, then I'm gonna be like, you know what? I hunt monsters for fun. You are nothing. And I'm gonna take out one of put both of my short swords if I can. Put my bow back. Sure. My on the ground. Yeah, you could, uh, between the previous round and this one, you can change a weapon. I want to take out two of my, my two short swords that I carry, which are actually just really big fucking knives. Okay. And just like, 
try and stab him into his chest. And while I'm doing that, I am using uh, my Monster Hunter, fe Monster Slayer feature, which is uh, Slayer's Prey. Okay. Um, so I can focus my ire on one foe, increasing the harm. Uh, as, a bo as my bonus action, I'm designating this creature so he takes an extra d6 of damage. Okay. From the weapon. Go for it. Uh, at the start of each turn. Okay, come on, baby. Double stab. <clears throat> okay. As you whip out your weapons, he looks you in the, in the eyes. And says, you muck me with fake tusks. <laughs> fake tusks? Okay, now I'm going to take an eye. <laughs> Um, I split scum. Okay, you better shut your mouth or I'm going to <laughs> shut it for you. Just like smack talking. <laughs> um, that is going to be a dirty 20 to hit. Yeah, and that'll do it. Cool. And that's a double d6. Um, nice. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Mixed damage. Mixed damage. That's going to be t uh, 10, 16 points of damage. 16 points of damage. I just fucking sashimi him in the chest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are just stuck in this dawn, this weird, like, awkward dance because there's too much blubber to work with. <laughs> but now you got your, your hooks in him. So you carved pork belly. Uh. Um, <laughs> slimy guy. Um, he is, he's now kind of ducking and dodging in between your legs, essentially, like trying to, trying to, trying to get leeway there. Um, he's gonna s try and like slide in between his legs, so if you can put him like behind um, Siegfried, he's technically like still maintaining he's in, he's still melee with, with you. Yeah. yeah, and then he's gonna try and hit you with a mace. It's because you oh. skipped leg day. Mace <laughs> in my not face, my ass. That's a twenty. Twenty. Yep. Still misses. N no, natural twenty. Oh, natural oh. twenty. Oh, yeah, that's, okay. that's different. It, it, that's gonna hit. It hits. Um, when do you get your adamantine upgrade? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. What well, twenty still misses? Holy shit! I have an uh, AC of twenty-two. Oh my god, that's gonna be yeah. hard. I'm the, I <laughs> am the tank. With his mace, he goes for that, and it, uh, it will be a plus four anyway, so it'd be twenty-four total, mm -hmm. um, which that would hit anyways. But it's a natural twenty, so yeah. it's not a lot of damage, but double the dice. 10 points of bludgeoning damage mm -hmm. as it just slides like <laughs> underneath your legs and then just dents in a, a piece of your posterior. Ouch, I was, I'm, that is very rude, slimy man. I don't know what your name is. We never really met, but very rude. I'm gonna call you rude. Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not creative enough. <laughs> the name like Rudy. He just like smiles up at you with his crooked, rotten teeth. <laughs> we playing game? <laughs> I don't uh, think we, you understand the rules. We make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, um, Lily, you, yeah, you're, you, you just fired this, this bolt overhead of this other guy, lean back out of the window, comes back up at you. Uh -huh. What do you do? So uh, at this point, I'm going to, uh, I realize that maybe my friend needs help, so I'm going to disengage. Uh, from this guy uh, with my bonus action. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, move behind. You can turn it, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, behind this or is here. Okay. Yes. And then I'm going to uh, use my short sword again. Mm. And I say, this time I'm going to have a taste of that blah blah. And then I'm going to, uh, yeah, go for a, a sneak attack. Okay, so uh, in our game with flanking, we don't do advantage um, because there's a pack tactics thing already. So we do a plus one for each extra person. So you get okay. a plus one on your attack. On attack roll. But, uh, but because he's engaged with a foe, you, you still get your uh, yeah, so sneak I, I, attack. Yeah, I don't need advantage, then I can just get the sneak yeah, attack. Yeah, you get your sneak okay, attack. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, so then we can roll to attack then? Yeah, go cool. Um, so that's... 15 plus 6 and then plus 1. That's, yeah, so that's 22. Go ahead. Awesome. And then that's 2d6. Uh, that's going to be 11 damage. Nice. Thank you, Devil. Well, so 2d6 is your sneak attack damage. No, 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 uh, no it's 1d6 sneak attack and oh, then 1, right. yeah, and then plus 1. Newt, where are you at this stage? I'm still hanging from the thing here. Okay. Uh, just and now he's conveniently facing the other direction, mm -hmm. uh, facing Siegfried. So I'm just going to hop down, and now I'm going to um, put away, uh, pull out my 
So I'll jump up into the air, start hovering, pull out my rapier, uh -huh. and then just full on drop down on top of him, try to stab straight down onto him. Go for it. So same thing, I get a plus one. Mm -hmm. and, but they also get a plus one against me when they attack me, because they also... Yeah. Oh, the same thing oh, applies yeah. to them as well. Oh, that's not great. Um, 13 to hit. On the on slime, slimy guy. Slimy guy. <laughs> not as heavily armored, hopefully? Wait. No, uh, a s well, you hit. Gobble up, man. That is 11 damage. Nice. I do believe you are the reason that this ship is not going to where it needs to be. You are not meant to be here. Do I look like I care? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> um, uh, with that, immediately you see the Otterben with this staff kind of waves it and much as a few words under her breath. And um, she casts a... You mean the you one that's out of the ship? on the, on oh, the right. floor oh, down below? Oh, I don't know ship. if they'd be able to see me. They can swim, um, but she comes climbing back up just at the point where she kind of just peers over there to see what's going on. Why are you still here? Actually, as they're climbing up, they cast bonus action up to the air, a spiritual weapon. Oh, fuck. Oh. Let me just see if I have something for that. Yeah. Um, actually, that works. As you see this like uh, fish head, like a skeletal fish head, um, spiritual weapon just come like <laughs> chomping over the side of the board. That's cool. Uh, so she's kind of climbing up, but the spiritual weapon is coming at you. Makes an attack roll. That's definitely gonna hit. And this weapon is attacking? Uh, Newt. Newt. Hmm. That's yes. not very nice. That is not very nice at all. That's gonna be 10 damage. As this, this ethereal, spiritual fish head just comes in, clamping down. Hey! Hey! Get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> want you to get... Siegfried. Okay, so I just want to get some clarification. Mm. It's, oh, thank you. How the tides have turned. <laughs> so this guy is within melee with me, right? So he's here, and is this person there? Yeah, but they're busy climbing up. Busy climbing up. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn and stay within melee and be like, well, if it ain't broke, you know, you didn't hit it hard enough. So <laughs> oh, I'm yes. gonna ca cast Thunder Wave again mm. in a 15 foot cube, and I believe it hits all three of them. Okay. Missing, missing Afghan who is just there on the. Okay, yeah, you can, you can. So they have to roll a Constitution saving throw, all three of them. So the Dwergar guy saves, the other two fail. Okay. Which one's the dragon? The, uh, yeah, he oh. saves and the mechanical the slimy dude. dude and so cleric. that means slimy dude and the one who's climbing up ten feet away again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and these two are just getting black. Yeah. She's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Does she take fall damage? Uh, into the water, no. Oh, she's um, falling on the ice. No, in the, in the water because oh, the ship's yeah, out yeah. Uh, That is, and they take eleven oh, points okay. of uh, thunder damage. This and one as well. Damn. Does he does he yeah. hit the railing or does he go over? This one. Uh, he, he'll just sort of slam back against the, the mast there, yeah. uh, not, not overboard. So, so Slimy Guy and the uh, Walrus person, they take 11 thunder damage, and the Duagar, who's trying to copy me, he takes five points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is about, identity <laughs> theft. And once again, anything that's not uh, tied down gets the shot away as well. The, the Slimy dude, he just flies back <laughs> into the mast, making like a crack in the mask and it sort of like wobbles and there's, there's a moment where it's like, oh, shit. But the mask is fine. <laughs> but he did. Oh! He did. Are you okay there? You've gone very quiet. <laughs> I think he's sleeping. Uh, he looks at you with his last breath. He won the game. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, that is good. And I kind of like crack my head. Remind me to never play games with you. <laughs> Oh, also, before I end my turn, I will end my turn now. Just uh, bonus action. Um, I use defensive field, um, and it's like shimmering, like light just comes over me, and I just get uh, three temporary hit points as well. You see now the Durgar guy gets really irate. Um, you just you just killed his friend, probably, or ally at least. 
and you see the only his face is sticking out of this suit, but you can see he's angry, and um, he looks straight at you into your eyes, and he, he calls down. He says, "Hey, Ruska, things are getting hairy." And he looks at you, and you can see immediately in your kind of sensors the threat levels like boop, 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 like rising okay. up. I need you to make a charisma saving throw. Ooh. Ooh. My, Ooh. my speciality. <laughs> mm. 16 minus 1, 15? Okay, this is your your personality, your newfound um, sentience in a way, trying to battle your programming as the threat level of the situation is rising, that old kind of built-in instinct to go full-on war golem uh, kicks in, but you manage to fight it all for the time being. So you see, once again, he just stands up straight again and his eyes go red for a second. And then shakes it off again, like, goes out and he's back into his slouching position, like, okay, do you want to play the game now? To <laughs> to the <door> now. <laughs> Let's go, big boy. And um, with that, we cut back to the order band, the main guy, who was now named as Ruska. And he's standing down there. He actually takes an action to disengage. And he distracts you, both of you, with just doing something weird. He goes, <laughs> and, uh, Like, you're both like, what? And he takes, he takes a moment to just step back and step out of it. And then he whips out to that narwhal Horn. Oh fuck! Oh. He says, "You might want to wait a second. He's the one who got knocked back into the sea, right? No, no, no. That's He's below deck. Oh, 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 below deck. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. We're not meant to harm you. There was not meant to be any passengers on this ship. You give me one second for demonstration, no? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you you die. We all die. This ship sinks." What do you mean the ship sinks? Yeah. Quick truce, quick truce. And he snaps to the other guy. I mean, you can you can not allow this to go on, but mm -hmm. you see there's a moment where there's maybe some room for negotiation here. Aww. Speak, what you want? Battle, please. And he, he points to the other guy standing there, and it's like, he, he motions to throw a barrel out of the window, and you can see there's a barrel um, strapped to this guy's side. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same barrels that the uh, Numak powder had been stacked in. So there are mm. crates with like okay. mined rock pieces and there's refined powder of it. Mm. And he throws the barrel overboard into the ocean. And through one of the other little windows, the slits, he blows the horn, the narwhal horn. It's a, it's a strange frequency that kind of hurts your ears. Mm -hmm. The barrel floating, bopping in the icy waters starts to like, and then it explodes into like a, a 15 foot radius around it. I hope it didn't hit the friend who was falling in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Which side did he throw it out? Because does that matter? He did the other thing. Would have been that side, yeah. Would have been that side. I damn it, Steve, why are you there in the blast? I, I didn't say like he, he would have looked where. He, through before it's out there, but like she's like, what? What's out, you fool? <laughs> and there's like there's like some icy shrapnel that comes flying her way, and he turns back to him and says, you see, this whole ship is loaded with Numak. We make it go kaboom, you see. So you have two options the way I see. We fight, see who dies, or you help us throw all Numak. Off board, you continue your journey. You tell Captain that we made you do it. Peaceful resolution, no? Can can I hear this from uh, up there? Yeah, there, there's those there's those um, cargo hatches okay. that they are, it's great. So you can and he's speaking kind of loudly because it's a uh, heightened situation. So what, you all hear this. What does Siegfried know about uh, Numark and its properties? And you can make a history check. Cool. I am... Or an Arcana check. History if you've read in books, or Arcana if you've kind of studied. It's more alchemical, magical properties. Okay. I'm proficient in both Arcana 
And alchemical supplies, can I get advantage to my throw? In some of these crates, you can see it's just kind of covered with cloth and so on, so you have a look at the substance and you get a whiff of it, which you kind of then analyze. I'll say, I'll say you can add a plus three to the roll okay. for now. Uh, shit, 15. You know, you've heard of Naman. Traditionally, it's used to kind of infuse weapons with a kind of stunning ability. It is said that when someone's hit by a Numak blade or a Numak weapon, they see flashes of their worst fears materialize before them. That has the ability to, to kind of incapacitate them for a second. But it has other abilities. Its common name is actually Omen Stone. It's how it's known around the world. And that is because some people, um, including the Odoben, use it to fashion kind of divining items, like cr crystal balls and the like. Okay. Um, but you've never heard of it having explosive properties. Yeah. But it seems now to be activated by sound and a certain frequency. Hello, Siegfried, nice to meet you. Um, listen, how, why, why do you want this new mark or this omen stone? Well, it it belongs to Odubin. It does not. Look here, Ice Blood. Look here, Odubin. You want to go again? Mm. I'm only bleeding a little bit. I blow you up so fast. <laughs> yeah, I got you so fast, right at the thick neck. But look, <laughs> this ship is taking Numak to people who know about this. Maybe they know, but if they know, it is dangerous to all people. Can I make an inside check just to see? Yeah. Is he is he um, saying this because he also not certain whether or not he'll win this altercation and mm. is looking kind of weak, or he just doesn't want to waste any more time? Okay. And yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, make an inside check. Good call, man. Uh, that's. And that's 19. Ooh. You, you get the sense that there is a, a fear that some of them might die, but he is not afraid to, to blow this entire ship up. Mm -hmm. And he knows that they can swim, mm -hmm. but most of you can't swim in mm -hmm. icy waters and survive. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a sense of like, come at me, I'm gonna blow this horn mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. So there's like a tense moment of like, can you get to me before I blast a whole bunch of barrels around us? But you also get the sense that there is a genuine fear there of other people having this power. Uh, more so maybe because it's their main way of defending themselves and they're now afraid other people in the world are going to start learning about this and using it in, in different ways. So the, the main cargo of this ship is, is Numak? Yeah, predominantly. Um, but it's only the powdered Numak that blew up, is that, is that... That you saw now, yes. And did he say that he wants to get... You, he all wants of the Numak? All of the Numak or just the, the powdered Numak? You can ask him. So, but uh, is, are you trying to get rid of just the powdered Numak or is all the Numak? I don't... Uh... Well, I, I guess if they get the rock Numak, they crush it powder, they have powder, so same thing. We throw it all overboard, all or nothing. Uh, well, I don't want anyone else to get hurt. I don't know, this new mark doesn't mean anything to me, so I've got no problem. The only problem is, this is our livelihood. If we start giving things away, and then everyone thinks we give things away, and no one gives things to us. So. But there's nothing wrong with giving friends I agree away with the devil if, you, woman. if you help people. No. This is a long six seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point, there's kind of a truce as you go all talking this out. So? How many barrels do you want? I won't get rid of it. Those bastards, they're not allowed to have it. It's ours. But we Wait, do you want some... to get rid of it? You yes, don't want it for board. yourself? We have more than my back home. I just don't want this to get to destination. But my people have been paid. Yeah, whatever. Throw it overboard. <laughs> <laughs> at least leave some. Because then at least it looks like we did something. Otherwise, then we look useless. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> Natty one! Oh! Look, there are two choices. We're simple people. Oblige me here. Kaboom. Kaploosh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Okay, I am okay with them taking battles. And I, and I take the sword and I hit the, uh, hit the deck. You are there. What do you think? I just don't want anyone else to get hurt. Um, I don't know, what do you... Do you, guys, did you, do you guys know about this like little flying woodman, by the way? <laughs> flying what? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what do you, what do you, how do you feel about this? You know... I don't really care as long as this <laughs> ship goes to where I think it's going. I don't... I don't give a shit. That is... That is... I kind of agree with the little wooden flying man. Oh my god. But out of principle... I don't like being fucking attacked. <laughs> <laughs> this is also a good point. I don't know. Well, in our defense, you were not meant to be here. It was only crew taking Numak away from us to potentially bad people out there. I don't know who they are, but they know about powder. So they want to blow things up. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, you take that powder. It's just like Lily, powder. interestingly, you, you, this is one thing you did over here is where, who ordered mm. this. You know it's going to Akube, mm. but it wasn't ordered from someone in Akube. And whether you want to share this information or not is up to you. He might be onto something. It's going to Akube, but apparently it didn't really get ordered from Akube. From where? I'm not really sure, Mar. You know, you just know that it was from someone, somewhere, in the Vermilion Empire. Apparently, I think I had something like Ver, um, Vermilion, Vermilion, yeah, Vermi, Vermilion Empire, yeah. I don't know where that yes, is. Yes, a Vermilion Empire, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Is, is that the, is that the empires that uh, the war golems fought in? Yes. Okay, is it that... is that once upon a time, Ironheim and Nether used to be kind of sister countries or share the same continent to, to a certain degree and war broke out and now they have formed what is called the Vermilion Empire. At the mention of Vermilion Empire, like he gets like these like little flashbacks of him before his sentience as just a tool of destruction and for the, for the Vermilion Empire and he's like, Okay, I've, I've, I think I've, is, this is the best idea is just to throw this overboard. Sure, whatever. I've been on board for that for like 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> At this point I say, uh, all right, all right, do what you want. And then I'm going to move into the kitchen and then I'm just going to lie on the floor and pretend to be passed out. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is on you. You, are, you. you guys do deal with this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that was easier than I thought. No, you just needed to like say that from yeah, the beginning. Maybe we should. We have our fault. We should come in and say yeah. that from start. <laughs> you yeah, have use no your, manners. Use your words, like. Well, we we were caught. You turn around, shoot with arrow. We were caught. Pretty sure guard. there's like a dead guy now. That's the, on you. Yeah, but he's okay. Uh, he, <laughs> he, 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 he was slimy anyway. anyway. It was he was pretty gross. Yes. Um, <laughs> All right, well, let's do this quick before those other people wake up, and then we will disappear. You tell them we made you do it, uh, we forced you or said we'll slit your throats, and then you're all good. Hopefully well, they take you. that will make me look weak. I'll say something else. Okay. Uh, <laughs> whatever you want to say. <laughs> you, you guys decide to call off the fights and start throwing barrels overboard. Yeah. Okay. I'm just sleeping in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> so Sig Sig Sigfried will actually help them protect the barrels. Okay, cool. I'm not going to help them do yeah, shit. Yeah, just watch. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, is there a moment where this guy is distracted enough that he's not holding his narwhal horn very tightly? Ooh. Probably not, but I'll say as, as they're throwing barrels overboard, I'll... If you want to make a, a, a sneak, a, first of all, roll a stealth check to kind of just um, void his gaze. 21. Damn. Um, that was close. There's a moment where it's, it's still fastened to his hip, so getting it off without him feeling is, is going to be tricky, but you can try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I pull out like, a crowbar, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try to do a little swap. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. he's got the so he's got the weight there, cool. but you know, Indiana Jones style. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. Um, 
So this is just a, what, a sleight of hand? Mm -hmm. no! Natural 20 no! plus Whoa. five. He is Yo. distracted. Oh my god. By something in the water. A person. His friend. <laughs> floating in the water, like, you all, you all see this, you're busy with your thing, um, but you all, well, you're downstairs, you guys see this. What you see is Hilda. What you see is your father. But you, you, don't, you don't know that each other is seeing different things, but you see this, this person squirming in the water, drowning. Um, I immediately leave whatever barrel and I jump in the water. Okay. And he's also distracted. You don't know what he's seeing, but he's distracted as you swap the horn. And you think you're like, oh yeah, and then you immediately sort of check out and. Oh yeah, uh, I'm gonna go stow it somewhere high. Okay, cool. Are you also jumping off? I uh, no, I I'm gonna just like close my eyes and just like shake my head because I feel like I'm not seeing yeah, this. Okay, yeah. make a. You don't even try and do that. So you make a, a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oops. Was the save? Yeah. Mm. Seven? It's enough to like see that just the fact that you chose to resist this, um, like there's almost like a glitch effect in you. You know, your father wouldn't. He, he's a traveler, but he's not a brave man. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be out here swimming after you or something like that, even though he's a bit far gone in the head. But you see something's wrong, and you kind of want to call out to Siegfried and. You all watch, and even you now hear this commotion outside as you sort of peep through one of the windows mm. downstairs. And you watch this figure that is Hilda rise out of the water and then turn into this kind of floppy, uh, billowy, just piece of white like material looking string. And as it rises out of the water, water sloshes off of what looks to be some sort of long tendril tentacle that rises out of the water. It's like an angler fish. Type. Like an angler type thing, yes, luring you in. And by the time you swim too close, it's too late to realize. And you all watch as the water darkens. Oh, no. oh shit. Just a pitch black shape. <laughs> Incredibly massive. Just as far as the eye can see around you and the ship starts now, rising up. So this is, this is right where the barrels are? Well, the, all the barrels were still in the ship. They threw one barrel off and exploded oh, it. Okay. Oh, so, wait, you, no, you, you no, guys yeah, are yeah, so, so, so all the barrels are floating right there, and I have the horn. <laughs> 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 but I'm also. So... Yeah, that's true. Um, it'll be so. But it's late fun. for you anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to wait up. to see what, what, what the hell this thing is for okay. a minute. But I say at this point, you, you notice the, the folly. You know, it's just the trick, and you sort of start to back paddle a bit. Okay. Um, but what starts to happen is this massive shape now starts to create a suction as the water starts to like concave in, mm -hmm. as everything starts to whirlpool a little bit, and the barrels start to as well. Yeah, well, new seeing this massive undersea creature or whatever mm -hmm. uh, and the barrels right there sign, semi away from the ship it's like well I, I guess I got it and so he'll he'll whip out the horn and uh, uh, blow in it and mm -hmm. see what the hell happens yes okay. thank you for killing my character in the prequel <laughs> game now very nice. <laughs> now do you uh, d describe to me how you blow it Try to point at the point the horn at the barrels, okay. and attempt to recreate the sound he made. Okay, uh, roll performance check. Uh, Nineteen. Yeah, you pretty successfully like the pitch like reverberating sound. Um, and you sort of like flush it around a bit to try Snake and charmer. Ca catch a whole bunch of barrels. But in that same moment, even though you succeed in what you're attempting to do, that pool that's starting to happen just exponentially starts going 
as it creates this deep gaping hole and all of a sudden it's like the water beneath the ship just whoosh, drops oh and the ship boy. goes whoosh, oh my God. cracks in whoosh, starts being sucked in as you're blowing all these barrels start going whoosh, whoosh. as you're all being sucked into this dark oh mole God. there's just exploding barrels all around you and all of you go sloshing in whirlpool of water being hit against uh, railings of the ship some of you below deck just like <laughs> into the the roof I need you all to make constitution saving throws. Constitution saving throws. Am I flying? Yeah, if you were above deck, you could be. But Oof. still, the, the suction of okay. just this, so, it, it is a massive like vacuum going okay. in. Um, you're still being pulled down. Thank goodness. Um, mm. That's a six. Six, okay. Uh, that Somewhere. is 19. 19, okay. You being in your prone sleeping position actually helps oh, yeah. to a certain degree because you're like, oh, you just hold on mm-hmm. to the sides. Keep. You get slapped by the deck of the ship coming up, and even though you're flying, it goes, <laughs> gets you. <laughs> like a bug. <laughs> oh, is you? Natural 20. Natural 20. Hey. Nice. Plus two for 22. Nice. You. Uh, instinctively sort of like dive out of one of the windows t- as to not get or if that's what you want yeah, 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 yeah. to not get jostled around inside with barrels and crates flying everywhere but you realize you're diving into this whirlpool uh, abyss um, and you 23 23 okay so you guys remain you keep your bearings on you you're semi unconscious as this as you just blew the horn and now everything exploding around you guys those of you that are still awake to a certain degree, if you want to try and see what this thing is while this is happening, yes. make perception checks. Totally. Question for Definitely. the DM. Mm. Would, being that this is like a place that I'm native to and I sort of have an understanding of wildlife and wilderness in general, would I have any kind of inkling as to what this is? At this point, um, the ship had been slowly just trudging along, trudging along, so you'd actually made your way um, a couple of hours away from like the coast past of... Past familiar waters? Yeah, okay. past, past the icy regions, at okay. least. Um, the, the snow caps or the glacier is starting to clear up. But you can go ahead and make a nature check if you want. Cool. And uh, how is Bob, where's Bobby at this point? He's still passed out on the upper deck. <laughs> or, well, that's where he was, at least, before the deck went... and <laughs> catapulted him. Yeah. Uh, I rolled a 10. I'd say if you want, you see Pompey flying through the air, uh, seeing that you roll pretty high on that constitution, if you want to try and yes. catch him as the last. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Best friend, I've got you. Yeah. Try and like extend my arms, like... Tell us, catch him. Make a dex... Yeah, just a dex check, I guess. Can it be an athletics? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. A football catch. <laughs> you ex- extend your hands, but your upper body is too big to like have a small enough hole, and he just goes like <laughs> through, through a so it's like through a hoop. Not too much. <laughs> oh boy! But at that point, everything becomes the sloshing whirlpool. What did you roll? Uh, I rolled an eleven. Eleven. This doesn't seem like anything you've heard of before. It doesn't seem quite natural. Something this large. Mm. Um, to swallow an entire ship. But if you want to make perception checks to see what details of the thing you can make out, you're welcome to. You're gone. I, I didn't even roll. Yeah. I rolled 17. 17, 17. okay. You absolute dog shit, nine. Uh, but for, to see three. details of it. Yeah. yeah. Two. Two. <laughs> to focus on Pompey. Yeah, you're focused on Pompey, you're trying to figure out what this thing is, if you've heard of it, you actually are the only one that gets a proper look and you see, you see different parts of it and it doesn't, add up does it make sense one part of it initially seemed like it's massive flap fins of a manta ray but then oh. the the maw as it opened and swallow you guys as you were right at the bottom peering over it looks like some sort of giant catfish with mm. like long whiskers coming off but then the bottom end of it as it was peddling up to swallow you guys just looked like it didn't look like fins, it looked like a collection of arms and hands at the tail end, like just many, many arms and hands, sort of like <laughs> paddling, but massive paddling in the water. But that so could, just, nope. could just be a form of delirium. It must have been the food. And <laughs> in this flurry, you 
all gone. And it becomes pitch, pitch dark as the mole closes above you all and the ship gets crunched and water sloshing around. And that's where we'll pick it up next time. Oh, Damn. Are you kidding? Oh my, oh my god. Oh. All I want to know is if I hurt this thing. Hate <laughs> <laughs> it. Oh my god. There was a bit of a theme today with things with many arms. Like yeah. 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 yeah, I hate it. <laughs> so. yeah. But at least I have a horn. Mm. Yeah, so that's you true. Do. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for watching and joining us for the first kind of prequel episode. And I can't wait to do this again. It was so fucking fun, man. Yeah, so, yeah. so good. Super fun. Amazing. Devil Up Troop? Yeah, Devil Up Troop. Devil Up Troop. Okay. Thank you all. See you next time.